Amazon is making around $321 million a day. That's about $13.4 million every hour and $222,884 every single minute. Isn't that crazy? How about today I show you how to get a piece of that? Hey guys, my name is Daryl Wilson and today I'll be showing you all how to create an Amazon affiliate marketing website. But first, what is an Amazon affiliate marketing website? An Amazon affiliate marketing website is a website that you own that generates passive income online. With an Amazon affiliate marketing website, you can promote other people's products from Amazon on your website. When a visitor is referred to Amazon from your website and purchases a product through your affiliate link, you then get a commission of the sale. Plus, there is no limit on how much you can earn. There are many successful Amazon affiliate websites that generate $20,000 a month and more. Now, the best part about owning an Amazon affiliate website is you don't need to worry about shipping, you don't have to worry about inventory, and you don't also have to worry about dealing with any customers either. And also, there is a lot of pros about owning an Amazon affiliate website. Number one, Amazon holds more than 12 million products, so no matter what kind of niche or product you want to promote, Amazon has it. Number two, Amazon has the best conversion rate. This means people know and trust Amazon, making it a lot easier to promote. Number three, recurring revenue. If the visitor liked what you recommended, they will always come back to see what else you recommend in the future. And the best part, making an Amazon affiliate marketing website is fast, easy, and it'll cost you less than $3 a month. Now, who am I and what do I know about affiliate marketing? So I've been doing affiliate marketing for four years and I make my living by earning passive income online. Last year, I generated around $1 million in sales by promoting other various companies. Here are some of mine and my partner's affiliate income reports. Here, let me log in to show you guys this isn't some fake screenshot. People are doing this in real life, and with my help, you guys can get this done. Now, I do want to be upfront with all of you. This is not all peaches and cream, okay? Affiliate marketing is hard work, and you should take it serious and treat it like you would any other business that you're starting. But as long as you're consistent with your website, you keep trying and you don't give up, you will start to make money from your website. Here's an email from a user who watched my previous affiliate marketing tutorial and generated his first commission from his website. It's not a lot, but it's a really exciting feeling when you make your first sale online. Also in this video, I'll be teaching you all the difference between a do follow back link and also a no follow back link. I'll also be covering how to get more traffic and I'll be explaining terms like domain authority and page rank and why these are important when building your Amazon affiliate websites. And to make this video even better, I've invited another YouTuber named WP Eagle. WP Eagle is well known in the community for his Amazon affiliate marketing specialty. Last year alone, he created an Amazon affiliate website from scratch, just like you will today, and now his website is generating more than $1,000 a month. He's been featured on various websites and podcasts for being an Amazon affiliate marketing guru. WP Eagle is very knowledgeable about how to effectively write your posts and will have everything you need to know to create a successful Amazon affiliate website. So now let's talk about money. How much money is this course gonna cost you guys? Nothing, this course is completely free. We are not one of those fake gurus, okay? We don't sell paid courses. We're not gonna make you sign up for a free webinar and we are not gonna drive Lamborghinis, so don't worry. However, you will still have to purchase your domain and hosting and that's standard for all websites, but we do have an exclusive discount for all of you on this YouTube channel. Also in this video, you will all receive a free starter template that is designed specifically for Amazon affiliate marketing. It comes with a homepage a single product reviews page, and also a blog page that just looks fantastic. Now, let me go ahead and quickly show you all the website that you will get for free in this video. All right, so here's the Amazon affiliate marketing template that you will all get for free in this video. Now, making an Amazon affiliate marketing website from scratch can be a little time consuming. So with this starter template, it'll really help you speed up the process of making a really nice and really professional looking Amazon affiliate marketing website. Now you can see on my website how I am focusing on drones. So I have topics like the top 10 best drones, uh, drones for you know nighttime, the new Phantom, and also drones on a budget. Now you can promote any type of products you want with this Amazon affiliate tutorial. You can promote makeup, phones, video games, cleaning supplies, and also kid products, which are actually quite popular on Amazon. And we will talk more about uh, niches later in the video. Now I am promoting drones on my website. However, we can also promote various products that kind of involve drones. So we have cameras for drones, the GoPro versus the drones, the best tablet for drones, and also filter for drones. 
So we want to maximize our profits and make money from other products that have some sort of correlation with drones. So we'll talk more about that in the video to make sure that you don't always talk about one specific product, but you know, products that relates to drones and how you can make more money from them. And then scrolling down, we just have people can subscribe to our newsletter and we also have popular reviews. Now here you can go ahead and write single review products. So you can talk about specific drones, the new iWatch that works with drones, the best drones accessories. And uh, we'll talk more about the review page on the next section. And then below that we have a highlight. So we can talk about something that's very uh, popular and trending. So is the new Phantom drone worth $2,000? find out in this review. It's very uh, interesting to see these kind of posts and I think their users are really going to want to click on and read these reviews to see if it's worth it. And then scrolling down, we have this trending section. So this will actually show users what is the most popular article on your website. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these single reviews. So here we have some product reviews. So you can go ahead and write reviews on specific products and they're formatted in a really clean style where it shows the rating, the images look great, we have the title, and then we also can put some description about the review itself. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on one of these reviews. So here we have the image of the specific product that we are reviewing. And then below that we have a title of the product. And then we can have a tribute. So you can talk about the price, the performance, the value, the support, and then you can also give it an overall rating. Now, if someone goes and they click on this and they purchase it through Amazon, then you will receive a commission of the sale. So it's a really beautiful format and it's just a really clean way on how to promote products uh, with Amazon. Now here we have a quick summary to talk about a little bit about the product. We have some specs about the product and then we have some pros and the cons because you want to bring value to your audience. So you do want to let them know like, yeah, this is what's really good about it, but this is what we did not like about the product. Now this is totally optional. You don't have to have that, but if you want to add it, we will go ahead and put that on your affiliate marketing websites. Users can go ahead and share this article to their favorite social networks. Here we have uh, an image and then we just have some content about the product. And this obviously is demo content, but you can write about, you know, anything that you want. And then below that we have some social icons and then also they can take a look at the next product if they want to keep reading other posts on your blog. So next we just have a general blog post and this could be something like top 10 best drones, top 10 best protein shakes to buy or top 10 best makeup products. And here we just have an image of the product. We have some description of the product and then we have the buy on Amazon. And if they click on this and they purchased it, you will also then receive a commission. Now what's also very unique about the Amazon program, let's say they go through your link and they change their mind and they wanna buy a DSLR camera instead, you will also receive a commission on other products as long as they go through your affiliate link, which makes the program very lucrative. Now I know that because I've actually seen products that were purchased from my affiliate link that wasn't actually what I was promoting. So I thought that was really cool that you can make money from other various products on Amazon. And then this is just a standard general blog post where I list other products uh, to, you know, to show. And then if they buy it, I get a commission. Now also a lot of big popular reputable companies like Tech Radar are doing the same exact thing that we are doing today in this video. So they have the product, they have some specifications, they have you on Amazon. So we will be doing exactly what multi-million dollar Amazon affiliate blogs are doing today in this video as well. Also to help you all out, I have created free starter templates for all of you, such as the pricing tables. I have created custom posts for all of you. So if you need help with your posts and you need help with design, uh, I have designed all of these for all of you. And these are available as a free download simply by just watching this video. And then also we have post two, and then also we have a different format of post three, where we just have the product, we have some description, and then we have other products that you can talk about as well. So these will all be available for a free download in this tutorial. Now this is our blog page. Now your post will be displayed right here automatically. And as you guys can see, it looks really clean and it's really simple to read. And all you need to do here is just go ahead and swap the images, change the title and replace it with the products that you want to promote on Amazon. Now this blog comes in various different styles as well. So here we have a simple grid. Now you can also change this to something like a standard grid as well. You can also change it to an enhanced grid where it has that kind of messy clashy look to it a little bit. And then we have just a classic where it just has the image really large and then just has some description on it. So you can go ahead and change your blog post to various styles 
just depending on what you want to go with with your website. So overall, I think you're really going to like this template. It has everything that you need for an Amazon affiliate marketing website. And the best part is it's completely free. So by the end of this video, you guys will have an Amazon affiliate marketing website and you will be on your way to start making money online. You guys ready to get started? Let's go. Setting up your Amazon affiliate marketing website is super easy and we're going to build it in five simple steps. Step one, I'll show you how to get your domain and hosting. Web hosting is where website lives and breathes and we do have an exclusive discount only available on this YouTube channel. Step two, I'll show you how to create your website using a super easy drag and drop builder called Elementor. It's the world's most popular page builder for WordPress. Step three, I'll give this video over to Alex. He's gonna show you how to sign up with Amazon, how to pick products, and how to get visitors to your website. Step four, optimization and SEO. We're gonna make sure your website looks good on all devices and looks great in the Google search results. Step five, I'll give you some insider tips and how to make your website rank higher and start making more money. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase discounted and fast web hosting. And this is namehero.com. Now namehero.com performed as the most fastest and one of the most reliable web hosting companies out there. Now, how do I know that? How do you know I'm not just lying to you, right? Well, I actually tested Name Hero against 20 other web hosting companies for 90 days and Name Hero performed as one of the fastest and the most reliable web hosting companies on my list. In fact, Name Hero had zero downtime this whole week, so you'll have a reliable and a fast WordPress website. Now, I contacted the owner of this company to give me a special discount, so through my link exclusively, you all will save 70% off your web hosting. If you go to the website normally, you'll only save 50% off your hosting packages, and the owner gave me this discount just for my viewers on YouTube. So when you get to this page, you will click on Get Started Now. Name Hero offers four different types of web hosting plans. They offer the Starter Cloud, the Plus Cloud, the Turbo Cloud, and the Business Cloud. For those of you who are just getting started out for the very first time, I recommend the Plus Cloud. I think that's suitable. It gives you a lot of SSD storage. It's a very affordable plan and your website will be very fast. However, for those of you who have been using WordPress for a while and you want to upgrade, I highly recommend the Turbo Cloud. Now, the reason why I recommend the Turbo Cloud is because this plan offers the NVMe storage technology, which is a new type of storage technology for web hosting servers. For example, so this graph is from pcworld.com and you'll see that the NVMe storage can transfer data a lot faster than typical SSD and SATA hard drives. Also, you'll see that the NVMe storage can access information a lot faster than typical SSD and SATA hard drive. So for those of you who want a blazing fast website, I think the actual Turbo Cloud is a pretty good option. But I know everyone out there is on a different budget, so just select the package that works for you. And once you select the package, we'll scroll down to the bottom and then you'll click on order now. All right, cool. So this is where you're going to enter in your new website. So for example, my new amazing website.com or my dog is amazing.com or whatever you want to put. I'll just put demo tutorial 123.com and click on search. And look at that, we get a free domain on top of that. So once you select your domain, you'll click on continue. Lastly, we have the review and checkout. And look at that, you just saved $125. You have a year of web hosting and ID protection for under $70. So you have a very good value with namehero.com. Once you're on this page, you will scroll down. Next, we have the billing details. So you've seen this screen before. You'll put in your first name, your last name, your social security number, your bank account. I'm just kidding, guys. They don't want that information. <laughs> it's a joke. You'll put in your billing address and any other information you see here. For the support pin, make sure you write this down. So if there's an issue or you want to know something about your account, they will want to know about your pin just to verify that it's you calling and they wanna make sure it's not just some random person over the internet trying to get your info. You'll create a password, which you probably use the same password for all your other websites, right? I'm just joking. I, I do that sometimes, but I should really stop that. We have the payment method, so you can pay with credit card, PayPal, Coinbase or credit card Stripe. Look at that, people are using crypto. In fact, crypto, I think Bitcoin's almost at $20,000 right now. <sighs> Yeesh, it's crazy, man, it's just going up. And then you can go ahead and fill all this information out. Once you fill everything out on this page, you will then click on the checkout button. Now I will purchase an account and I will meet you on the very next page. 
and congratulations on registering your domain. So this is your current client area. Here you can access your support, you can access billing, you can purchase more domains, or you can upgrade or purchase other web hosting packages if you want to do that. And Name Your Girl has very good support. So at any time if you have a problem with your website, under the support, you can open a ticket or you can contact them anytime if you have issues with the websites. So next let's install WordPress onto your new domain. Under the My Cloud, you'll go ahead and click on My Cloud. I like this new interface Name Hero introduced. They recently remade their whole website. For those of you who have been with Name Hero for a while, you can tell they did a really good job at making their site look really nice. So I will click on the Plus Cloud. The next thing that we will do is we will access the cPanel. So on the left side under Actions, you will see Login to cPanel. Go ahead and click on Login to cPanel. All right, cool. So next, let's install WordPress. Let's scroll down, just keep scrolling, just keep scrolling. We're going to find WordPress installer and we're going to install WordPress onto our domain. So under software, you'll see WordPress manager by Softaculous. Go ahead and click on that. Next, it's going to say install a new copy. So let's click on install. All right, so this is the software setup. So let's just change some quick settings while we install WordPress onto our domain. For the protocol, make sure you have HTTPS. That just makes sure that your website has a valid SSL, and that just lets people know that your website is secure. For the indirectory, make sure nothing is there. That just means your website.com, you know, that's it. We don't want it to be whatever that is, so just leave it like that. For the site name, you can give your website a name, and you can also give it a description. So this can be web agency. You guys can see I've, I, I do this quite often and I just put a uh, cool website agency or something like that. You can change all this later, so don't worry about it. For the admin username, uh, make sure you put something that you know because you will need this information to log into your website and change it. So I'll put Paddywhack. And then for my admin password, I'll put uh, Paddywhack99. For the admin email, make sure you have access to this specific email, because let's say, for example, you forget your password, you will need to have access to this email to retrieve your password. And I'll scroll down. You can also select your language, but I just speak English, so I'll leave this as English, but you can select all of these languages like Spanish, Turkish, Arabic, and, and all those languages, and scroll down. And then we will click on the install button at the bottom of the screen. So now it's installing WordPress onto our domain. All right, WordPress has successfully been installed. On the administrative URL link, you can click on this link right here. And congratulations, you have now successfully installed WordPress and your website is now live on the internet. Now this is the back end of your website where you can make pages and posts. Now if you wanna see what your website looks like right now, what you'll do is you'll click on the top left right here and click on visit sites. And this is your website, congratulations. All right, see you guys later. No, I'm just kidding. It's using a uh, default theme. It's, uh, it looks pretty bland and boring and ugly and you know, it needs some help, it needs some work, but don't worry, we'll make it look really good. All right, congratulations party people. You now have your website and it is live on the internet. It's pretty simple stuff, right? Now in this next section, I'll be showing you how to build your website using the drag and drop page builder called Elementor. It's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple to use. So let's just go ahead and dive into it. We need to change some small general settings in the back end. So let's go back over here to dashboard. Now, first things first, uh, I want to go ahead and show you all some settings. So the first thing you'll do is go over here to users and go to profile. Now, if you want to change this kind of interface right here, there's different styles and how to change it. Uh, I usually go with midnight or modern. And I think for this video, I'll go with midnight. You know, we're, we're taking a gamble here. We're getting dangerous. Now, also we have this uh, contact info. Now, if you wanna change the email to your website, you can do it right here. And this is actually very important because let's say you forget your password, which pretty much happens to everyone, your email reminder or password reminder will go to this specific email. And then here you can go ahead and write some information about yourself. Now, this will actually be displayed uh, on your blog post. So I think people say, oh, I like to go hiking on my free time and I like to play video games and I'm a Marvel nerd. You can write all about yourself and this will be displayed publicly when you write posts. However, you can always disable that uh, on the blog post if you want to choose that or go that route. Now, also here we have a new password. So if you want to uh, put in a password, again, you can go ahead and put in a new password. And then once you're all done, you'll click on update profile. All right. Cool, pretty easy, right? 
Now, one more thing we need to do before we start making things beautiful and good. Uh, on the left side, you'll see settings. Under settings, go over here and click on permalinks. Now you want to change this to post name. And the reason why we do this is because you want it to be, you know, Daryl or your website.com slash reviews, right? Not all this crap, which just doesn't look good. So yeah, have it on post name and then you'll be all set. And then once you're done, you'll click on save changes. Now also, there are a lot of multilingual people watching my channel. So if English is not your first language, you can go to general. I think it's general, yeah, here. And then go to site language and you can pick from all of these different languages uh, like Spanish, Chinese, Arabic, uh, Portuguese, uh, you know, I, I, I can't even, I don't even know where this is from, <laughs> you know, like, but yeah, you can go ahead and pick uh, what you want. I also do have my videos translated in Spanish and Arabic for people who want to watch these same videos in different languages. But uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and click on save and then we are all ready to go. Next, what we're gonna do is we are going to import the starter template and make our website look way better. Now we're gonna do that by installing a free theme. So over here under appearance, we'll click on themes. Now what you'll do is click on add new. I mean, this is a quick giveaway, but I gotta show you all how to upload themes. So uh, click on add new. And then here we have featured. Now essentially how WordPress works guys is there are free themes and these themes kind of uh, they're like the structure and the style of your website. So every theme has specific features. However, we are going to be using a newer free theme that just has the most features I have ever seen before in a WordPress theme. So under search themes, we will type in Bloxy, Bloxy like that. All right. And this is the theme that you'll need to uh, use. Now this theme has massive positive reviews. I mean, it has 342 positive reviews and that is that is a lot for a WordPress theme with that many installs. So you can see it has overwhelmingly positive reviews. So what you'll do is you'll click on install. So here you'll click on install. And then once it's installed, it'll say activate. So go ahead and click on activate. All right, so now we have installed the Bloxy theme. Now, once you install the Bloxy theme, you'll get this little notification here that wants you to install the Bloxy companion. So go ahead and click on Bloxy companion. Now, if you're a click freak and you deleted this notification and you're like, oh my gosh, how do I get the plugin? Just go over here to plugins and go to add new and just type it in, Bloxy. So like this, Bloxy. And the Bloxy companion plugin will be displayed right here. So you can see this is it. Now what I'll do is I will click on install Bloxy companion. All right, now they're asking you if you want to send information such as bugs or crashes to them. You don't have to opt in. You can allow or continue or skip. It's really up to you, but I will click on uh, allow and continue. All right, cool. So now this is my interface. And what I wanna do first is I wanna click on starter sites. Now we have this beautiful template that says product reviews. So this is a template that was made uh, for this specific tutorial. I talked to the guys over there and they helped me make this template uh, for you guys all for free. So uh, once you actually click on this, you will click on uh, import. Go ahead and click on import. Now you can choose to make a child theme if you want. Um, that's really up to you. I'm not really gonna get too much into child themes. Essentially, child themes will help your website not crash when there's updates. So you can choose to have a child theme or not. But uh, hey, why not? I'll put a child theme. And then here, I will click on next. And I will also click on next again. And now I want to do a clean install. So this will delete anything on your website previously. It'll import all the content for you and everything automatically. And I will click on install. So essentially a child theme, guys, again, it just helps prevent, uh, if you write a lot of CSS and a lot of uh, altercations to the theme, a child theme will help prevent that. But for beginners and first time users, a lot of people don't really even have to have a child theme. So it's just really all about preference. Mostly developers need child themes because they do write a lot of CSS and that tends to get overwritten when there's an update for the theme. All right, the starter site has been imported successfully. All right, so click on view sites. And look at that, you now have a beautiful website that you can fully customize and modify. So you can see everything looks good, everything is ready to go. So that's your new website. 
Now, let's just say, for instance, you know, maybe a black landing page isn't your number one preference. So we can go ahead and change everything that we want about this website using a drag and drop builder. So on the top right here, where it says edit with Elementor, go ahead and click on this. Now, I'm not gonna go through a detailed uh, tutorial on the Elementor page builder, because I've already made tutorials on that. So I will leave those in the description below, but it's really, really simple. The Elementor page builder is really easy to use and really easy to, to modify. So you can just go ahead and double click on the text and change it to what you want. So this can be a drone review website that makes money, right? Like that. And then on the style section, this is where you can change all the options. So you can change the topography, you can change the font, you can add text shadow. So for example, we can make it red or something like that. But uh, yeah, that's that. Now also what you can do is you can right click on this and click on edit section. Now what I wanna do is I wanna edit this entire big background. So let's say for example, I don't want a black background. I can click on style right here. And you've seen how these guys have already made an image that looks really cool. But what I'll do is say, you know what, uh, for this image, maybe we'll go ahead and change it. So under the media library section, what we can do is we can use a different background image or you can find any background image that you want from the internet. So what I'll do is I'll just put in this one here and then click on insert media. And now we kind of have this like a review style website. It looks a little bit more, you know, a little, little bit more different. Doesn't look so techy, right? And then we have different options. So I can contain this, or actually no, no, let's just do cover, all right? And then maybe default center and yeah, we can kind of change the the style of it like that so you can go ahead and move the image around with these options right here and just kind of mess around with these options but generally i think covers good uh, attachments we can leave it as scroll or fixed where we go ahead and scroll and now you see how the background image doesn't move so something like that and yeah so this section right here would basically control the background and you can also add a background overlay so what we can do is we can reduce this overlay something like that or we could increase the overlay and yeah. So you can go through these options on your own time. I don't wanna go through every single one of these options because then this tutorial can easily be five hours and I know you guys don't wanna watch five hour videos. But uh, what we can do is keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down. And let's just say we wanna change this to something like uh, you know, happy customers. We can change this to customers and yeah, we can do that. Yeah, you get it, yeah. And then maybe for these images, we can change these images. So I'll put this one right here. And then I'll take this image on a pencil and I'll drag it back up there like that. And you can see it's drag and drop. And we can also replace these images. So for example, I'll just say, you know what? I wanna use maybe like something like, uh, I don't know, what we're we gonna grab here. We'll use this one right here. And we'll put in that one. Now notice really quickly, you might have this problem on your website that this image is just different size and you know, you, you guys don't know Photoshop, it's, it's really difficult. What you can do is you can actually look at the size of this image and then you can replace it with that image. So for example, let's just say, all right, this image, uh, what is the size of this image? Well, the size of this image is 600 by 800. Whoops, 600 by 800, right? So what I'll do is go to my image and for the image size, I'll have custom and I'll change this to 600 by 800 just to make it look all clean and neat. And then it'll actually resize the image like that and make it look a lot nicer. So uh, images, you might have a problem with images. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes they don't come out the way you want, but that's just a way on how you can make them all look the same and just look really nice. And then for example, uh, we can change this to, you know, to the best drones, you know, so, or let's just do like uh, best drones for men. I don't know, for girls, for kids, let's do ki kids. There, that's a good one. Yeah, for kids, kids. So there we go, best drones for kids. And then what you can do is under this button, you can then link them to that specific article. So for example here, uh, I'll just go to my website and just give you a quick little example of how to interlink articles, which Google loves. We will take, uh, let's see, we'll take, we'll take this article right here and I'll copy that. So let's say for example, uh, this is an article about, you know, the best drones for kids. Uh, what I'll do is I will go ahead and link that there. So when they click on this, it'll then take them to the article about drones for kids. And here we go, drones, here we go, watch, read article, read article. 
something like that. So what you can do here is you can just go ahead and interlink various pages uh, with these buttons to make it a lot easier. So that's how you can kind of use this and customize it and modify to fit your preference for your websites. So what I'll do is I will keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down. And of course, we can change this to anything that we want. Now these posts right here, they do not display when editing because these posts are actually uh, created by Bloxy. However, there will be an update in just a few days to fix this. So while you're editing it, you will be able to see it. But uh, yeah, that's why these specific reviews are uh, blank. But uh, rest assured, they are still there. So when you exit the builder, they will be displayed. And you can actually change the number of reviews by saying, I want it to be three reviews or four reviews, and then clicking on updates, and then it'll display once we close the page builder. But uh, yeah, we'll keep scrolling down here. And then again, we can change this to something else. We can change the review. So if this is a a 4.5, we can do it like that, right? And then change this image. To change the image is really simple. Just click on this little pencil icon and then choose the image. And then we can go ahead and change that image to something else like this drone, right? And then we can go ahead and see how this looks like that. And that looks pretty good. And then you can use any image that you want. And then you can link them to that specific article right there. So that's just an overall crash course on the Elementor page builder. Now I do have another tutorial that goes in depth and talks about basically every single feature on the Elementor page builder. However, in this video, I will not be covering it because that can be a lot and a lot of people will probably get this just by messing around with it. So next, let me show you all how to quickly create a page and then also add it to your menu just in case you were not sure on how to do that. So to make a page, just go over here to plus new and click on page. And maybe this can be something like the about us page. You know, uh, if you want to add that to your affiliate marketing website, you can. Some companies do that, you know, some don't, but it's up to you. So this will be about us, right? And then here I'll just click on publish and publish. Now you can go ahead and design this page by clicking on edit with Elementor. And then you can go ahead and design this specific page. Now, also what we can do is we can go ahead and change the actual style of this specific page as well. So I'll click on this little B right here for Bloxy, and then I'll just select something like a normal width, right? Like a normal width style or something like that. And then click on update. And then I'll click on edit with Elementor. So here I can go ahead and use the builder to make elements. So for example, I can put in a three column row, right? And then over here, I'll drag in some text and then I can drag in a button. Do I say button weird? Everyone says that, but I'm not sure. And then here, drag in an image. And then this image can be something like, uh, I'll just grab in a drone image like that. And I, I need a title, right? I need a title. So I'll just put a title here and just saying, we want your money. I mean, let's just be honest. That's why you're making this website. But I mean, that's why I'm on YouTube. So <laughs> it's a good trade off. But here you can see that, um, you know, we can link them somewhere and make everything look good. Now, what we can also do is right click and delete this and also do the same for these ones because I don't want it, you know. And instead of using all these modules right here, we can use a template from Elementor. So what I'll do is click on this little template icon. And there are some pages that we can use. A lot of these are for the pro version. Now, if you guys do decide to purchase the pro version for Elementor, you do get access to all of these templates and you also get access to more elements on the left side over here. Uh, like, you know, they have like just, they have a lot of different cool little anim uh, uh, elements that you can use in gadgets and stuff like that. Now there's some templates here that are for free that you can use on your website. There is also pro templates as well. Now, to be honest, you don't need the pro version because uh, we already have the website, but if you do want access to some of these templates, I will leave a link below to purchase Elementor Pro. It does help support me in this channel to make these tutorials for free. And uh, also you do get Elementor and you actually help support their company. But again, you don't have to do that, I get it. Instead, let's click on blocks on the top left. Now we have access to various blocks. So we don't really need to go ahead and have a pre-made website, but here I'll click on hero. And what we can do is we can insert blocks. So for example, I'll insert this block here. Now, if you do decide to use the blocks and the templates for Elementor, you'll need to make a free account and it doesn't cost you anything at all. So what you'll do is just click on get started. Now guys, I already have an account, so I'll just go ahead and log in. Now you don't have to follow me here, but you can just watch and see uh, if it's something that you wanna do. Next, I will click on connect. 
All right, so I connected Elementor, and now what I'll do is I want to insert this block onto the page. So all I'll do is just click on Insert. All right, so now we have this block, and what I'll do is I will make this a full width section like that by clicking on full width, and there you go. So now we have this beautiful landing page, and I can go ahead and change the title to this, and I can edit it, and I can keep adding blocks throughout my website instead of having to rebuild everything from scratch. So what I'll do is I'll say, all right, well, now maybe I want to do something like an about us section, right? And then you can use something like this by clicking on insert and then insert this block and then you can go ahead and replace these images and then change the text to whatever you want. So the blocks really do help you build a website a lot faster. And this is just, again, a crash course of Elementor. But uh, what I'll do here is I will update this and save my progress. Now let's go ahead and assign it to the menu really quick. So let's go over here and go to exit to dashboard. I will close this. Next what I'll do is I'll add that page to the menu. So under the appearance and under menus, I'll click on that. And now we have pages. So what I'll do is go to view all and then under the about us, I will now add this to the menu like that. And then I can rearrange it like that and click on save menu. All right, and now what I'll do is just click on visit sites and now we can see the about us has been added to the menu. And if we click on it, we can now be reverted back to that specific page. So that is pretty cool. Now that you know how to make pages, now let's talk about blog posts. Over here, we'll click on the news tab. Here is the demo posts that were created by the WordPress theme automatically. Now remember, these are just demo content, so they're just placeholders. Now what you can do is you can modify each one or you can make a new blog post and they will display on this specific page. I'll also show you how to change the title of this to something else and I'll talk more about that when we talk about the theme customizer. Now if you want to make a post, all you need to do is go over here to plus new and click on post. Now this is almost the same way as making a page but there are some differences. So I'll put something here like the best drone on Amazon. Something, something that just people are gonna buy. It's like, oh, you gotta buy this or else you're, you're, you're a loser, you know, something like that. And then this is where you can just put in the content. So this is the content. Now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and just, uh, you know, paste some demo content, something in there just to, get, uh, just to get everything started. And then that's pretty much it. And you can go ahead and you can keep writing your content. Now this editor that we're using is called Gutenberg. There's two editors. You can use the default editor, which is Gutenberg, which is this right here, or we can use edit with Elementor. Now it's the same thing. They produce the same results. They're just different ways of writing the content. Now, if you wanna go ahead and add a button with Gutenberg, all you need to do is go ahead and click on the add a block and then find the button. So I will find the button, right? And then this will be like buy on Amazon. And then here I can go ahead and insert the URL of the Amazon product. Now, just for example, I'll go ahead and paste an Amazon product and I'll select open in a new tab. So what this means is that when users click on this, your browser will open up a new tab and they will not leave your websites. And then, you know, uh, above that uh, button, I'll go ahead and just, uh, I'll put an image in here. So I'll click on the plus icon and I can put in something like an image. Now here I'll click on media library. You can also upload your own images. And then here I'll just post an image of the drone. And then we can also resize this. You can just simply go ahead and resize it. And then you can go ahead and maybe even list a price here. Uh, if you want to add some more text, you can just say, uh, you know, for example, I'll press enter and then I'll add in some more text and then, you know, buy on Amazon for like, you know, whatever, $19.99 or I, I don't know how much this thing costs. How, what is it? $2,000. And we can, you know, we can actually bold that and italicize it, something like that. And then we can go ahead and insert the link there as well. Now, Alex is going to help you more with this and he's going to make you make really beautiful blog posts because this is not really structured. It's not really looking good. So remember, this is just a small crash course on the builder just to get you comfortable with the actual way to make content. All right. Now, one important thing is on the um, on the left side, you'll see posts right here. Now you can make categories. So for example, we have categories here, but maybe I want to make a drone category. And this will be very important later when you want to categorize your posts. So maybe you want a page for drones, you want a page for iPhones, you want a page for something else. This is where you can do it by adding in specific categories. 
And then over here we have featured image where you can select a featured image by selecting something like, uh, you know, like that, set a featured image, right? And then click on publish and publish. And then here I will click on view the post and the best drone on Amazon. Here we have our content or our image. And then there we go buy on Amazon. And then there we go. So this is using the default editor with WordPress. So that's an example of Gutenberg. Now you can also make the same exact page with Elementor. So now let's use Elementor really quickly. I'll click on this edit with Elementor. And now I will use the page builder to actually create the blog post instead of the default editor with WordPress. So essentially it's the same thing. We have our content locked inside, right? Now th there is an advantage using Elementor because now you can go ahead and drag in elements right here instead of having to use the default editor with WordPress. So what I'll do is I'll just delete this. Next, what I'll do is I will drag in this text editor and drop it in like that. All right, cool. And then here I'll play some demo content like that. So now we can see how we're using this page builder instead. Now let's say, for example, well, I want to display an image of the drone and I want to uh, add a button. So it's very simple. We can go ahead and say, all right, what I'll do is I will take an image and drop it in here like that. Now what I'll do is I will go ahead and choose an image and I will select something like this, right? That looks good. Something like this. And then below that, we can go ahead and use these blocks and just simply uh, drag in maybe some text below that. And this can be something like by, by, but hold on, there we go, by now on Amazon. And then simply below that, we can put a button like that. And then we can also design and customize this button. So you do have a lot more control uh, over the blog post with Elementor, because remember, you can use any of these elements uh, on your blog post, just making it very uh, versatile and diverse. So we can put in these stars and then you can kind of decorate each specific style. But again, Alex will go ahead and walk you through on more of this and make sure that your posts look really good and that they're fully optimized. So now that you know how to kind of differentiate the difference between Gutenberg and Elementor, now I'll just click on update and I will go ahead and view the page. All right, next what I'll do is I'll click on news. So now you can see that we have our drone here and we also have our other blog posts. Now I'll just go ahead and give you a small introduction to the theme customizer right now, just because I want to show you how to change the format of your blog post. So let's go ahead and click on customize at the top left. Now we're gonna touch base more on the theme customizer in a little bit, but I just wanna give you some sort of familiarities just to make sure you're kind of comfortable with the actual theme customizer. So what we're designing right now, we are designing the blog post, right? Or I'm sorry, the blog page. So it's really simple. You know, all you have to do is go to blog post because remember, we are designing the blog post. Now what we can do is we can select something like a grid or I like the simple one the best. I think that one's probably the nicest. And it just comes out in a very clean format. And I really do like that. So I wanna leave it like this for now. And then what I'll do is I'll click on publish. So next what I'll show you how to do is I'll show you how to assign these categories to your menu. And I'll also show you how to change this news to anything that you want. So over here, we'll go back to our dashboard and we'll go down to appearance and go to menus. So first thing is we wanna change this news right here. So what you can do is click on this little uh, post page and then change this to something like reviews or uh, the new or blog or I don't know, drone news or something like that, or a, a drone tips or you know something like that. Something to let people know what, your, uh, what that page is about. And then I'll click on save menu. Now also I made a specific uh, topic about drone. So uh, over here we have our posts. Now what we can also do is go to categories and saying, you know what, all the categories that I talk about drones, I wanna make a specific page for that. What I can do is click on drone and add that to the menu like this. I can also do something else. Let's say for uh, we have our insider, I'll add that to the menu, which is another category. And I can make this a sub menu for reviews like that. So this is a drop down menu. So let me go ahead and give you a quick example of that. So I will click on save menu and go back to our front page. All right, so we have drone right here at the top and also we have reviews. Now you can see how there's a drop down of insider. So that's how you can display a secondary menu on your menu. 
Now let's go ahead and click on drone. So now you'll see that only the categories that we talk about drones will be displayed right here. So that's just a way to how to differentiate your products and how to kind of have specific categories on specific products. So now let's go ahead and talk about the theme customizer. But before we do that, I'm just going to make a quick page because um, we're going to talk about the theme customizer. But I just want to give you something else. Another example here, review page number two. And I will publish this and publish this. Don't worry about what I'm doing right now. I'll explain all of this in just a little bit. But I'll go ahead and go to the theme customizer. You can also access your theme customizer by going to your dashboard and clicking on customize your site. Or you can go over here on visit site and click on customize. It brings you to the same exact place. So I'll go ahead and click on customize. So the theme customizer essentially controls all the parts of your website that the page builder normally does not. So for example, we have this header right here. Now you might notice right away, this is a transparent header. So if you want to change your header, what you'll do is go over here to header. Now you can see that this is a header builder. Now I will be having a full tutorial on Bloxy and all the features that it offers in another video because quite frankly, uh, we can talk about headers and footers for, for hours, but I'll just give you a, a small preview of it to help you understand. So let's say for example, you want to drag in something like social icons. Uh, we can go ahead and drag in social. Then you'll see right here we have social icons, but they're a little squeezed. So maybe I want to put that on the top row instead. So now you'll see we have this top row and then we can have like a my account. We can have a search bar at the top. All right. So now we have a search bar. Next, if you want to take the button, you can move the button around over there. So now you'll see the button jumps from over here to there. So it's a very fluid builder and you can kind of mess around with this on your own time to kind of design it. Now we have a transparent menu on right now. So let's go ahead and take that off. Here we have the header section and we have a global header. Now this is the sticky functionality. So when we scroll down, we have this sticky style and we can change the sticky style uh, just depending on you know how you want to do that. If you don't want a sticky menu, just turn it off and now you do not have a sticky menu. So that's just uh, one way on how to add a sticky menu, turn it on and off. Now here we have the transparent functionalities. I'll go ahead and turn this off. So what this will do is this menu right here will now become, uh, it'll be like a, a blank color like that. And we can design this color by going over here to the main row and clicking on this gear icon. And under the design section, we can now design the color. We can have uh, all sorts of different styles and ways on how to color all of this. So for example, the background, the default states, what I'll do is say uh, we can have a, a gradient. We can have like a red background, which looks really <laughs> ugly uh, or a black, but then you'd probably want to change the text to white, right? And then we have our elements here. So under menu one, we can click on menu one and then we can go ahead and design the specific element of menu one. So for the design section, what I can do is I will change the uh, default states to something like white, right? Like that. And then also when we have something uh, linked or we're like currently on, I'll also change that to white just because uh, I just feel like that makes a little bit more sense, right? Now you can also change the hover icon right there or that little, I guess you want to call it a bar, right? A hover bar. And you can go ahead and change that right there. You can see it's active and there's just other little customization options and everything. But remember, you can fully customize every single um, element here by clicking on the actual elements. You can change the button style. So it has like that ghost style. So you can go through all of these options and do that, but that's how you can go ahead and change the specific color for your menu. There is also different various uh, menu styles. So you can go ahead and check those out as well. Next we have the general tab and this is why every theme works differently. So for example, this theme has a website frame. So now we have this big frame on your website. A lot of themes do not offer this. So this is how Bloxy is kind of competing with their competitors. Now there's also a scroll to top, which will actually make a little button appear on the bottom right. And if they click on it, it will then bring them to the top of the screen. So I think you get the idea here. The theme customizer, it just basically adds different styles, different layouts, different features for your entire website. Now also there's the general settings and the general settings just offers different features throughout your website. For example, we have this website frame. We can click on this website frame and we can even change the color and just kind of, you know, add some style and decor to your website. 
A lot of photographers use this actually, I've seen it before, but uh, for our websites, you know, you can add it if you wanna do that, but uh, I will not be adding a website frame for this specific tutorial. There's also a scroll to top, which basically adds a little uh, rocket to the bottom right of your screen. And when users click on it, it'll actually bring them to the top, just in case they scroll too much to the bottom of the website. So again, the theme customizer just offers various features uh, throughout your website to enhance it and just to overall, um, you know, give it a look and feel of your, uh, you know, of what you want to go for. Now, let's say for example, okay, well, let's click on the drone news page. So just to be clear, the post types blog post, the blog post controls your post pages. So for example, we can click on this and we can modify that just like I showed you all earlier. Now we also have the single post page. So that means if I click on this post, I can now design it using the single post section. So for single post, I can actually design it right here. So you can go ahead and you know change this to a box layout and you can kind of uh, you know you can kind of you know mess around with these settings and seeing if you want to take off the featured image or if you want to add a share box to your specific single posts. Then we also have categories. Remember how we made a specific uh, category for a drone? So this is my category page, and this is where the categories comes into play, where you can design your category pages. So you can design every single part of your website using this free WordPress theme, which is really incredible. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is setting a new page for reviews. So for example, we have all of our posts on drone news, right? But what happens if this page gets deleted? What happens if something's wrong with it? What happens if you don't wanna use that specific page? Let me show you how to assign a different page for your posts. So what I'll do is go back over here and then we have all of our theme customizer options. Now what I'll do here is I'll go over here to menus. All right, and this is our current menu. You can also access your menu through the theme customizer. It's kind of a tip, but you know what I wanna do here? I wanna change this in dark mode really quick. I like this style better actually. I think that's really cool. So here I'll click on the menus. Now remember I made that page, how I had that reviews page number two. I wanna add that to the menu by going to add items, review page two, all right? And then clicking on publish. Now, since I made the reviews page two, I don't want the drone news no more. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and remove this page. So I didn't delete the page, I just took it off the menu. And then I will click on publish. So now I wanna say, I want all my blog posts to now be on the review page number two instead of the default one. So what I'll do is just go back here and back, and then home page settings, my post page, I want it to be selected to reviews page two. So now what I'm saying is I want my post to be displayed on reviews page two instead of the other one news. That's it. And I'll click on publish. I will close this theme customizer. So now that we know how to make posts and everything else, let me also introduce you to the newest feature of Bloxy, which allows you to create single product reviews, which will make your blog posts look really, really nice. Now, this is totally optional. You do not have to do this. However, uh, this theme comes with this feature and it makes your site look really, really cool. So on the left side, you'll see product reviews. So what you can do is you can click on all reviews and you can see uh, a lot of these uh, demo product reviews. Now what I'll do is I'll just click on view. And now you'll see we have this product review. So this is a single product review, how we have these stars and this overall score. We have read more and buy now, and we have a quick summary. And then we have all of these other, uh, you know, all these other custom fields that are here. And then we have the actual product with some description. So let me just go ahead and walk you through really quickly on how to create this. It's really simple and you can actually use these if you decide to write posts on single products. So over here you have plus new and then you actually have the uh, product review. So I'll make a review quickly on a drone, a drone. Now you don't have to follow me here guys. This is totally optional. I just wanna introduce you to this feature because I think it's really cool. And then here I'll put in some demo content. All right, so that's my dummy text I put in here. Now I'll go ahead and add in a featured image. So let's just say I wanna write a single product review on the Phantom, you know, the Phantom drone that costs $2,000. So that is my featured image. Now when I scroll down here, we're gonna see some new options. So this will be something like buy now, and we can also put buy on Amazon, right? And then this is where you're gonna put your affiliate link. Now, Alex is gonna walk you through on how to create an Amazon website and also how to uh, get your affiliate link. So once you get it, you'll go ahead and put it right there. 
Next, I have the read more button. So if they want to read more, they can click on the read more tab. Next, we have the small description. Now, the small description is a small introduction about the product. Now, for example, my website has this same exact feature. So here I'm talking about the Bloxy theme. Now, I just give it a, a small introduction. You know, the Bloxy theme is a good free theme and uh, has a lot of features. I highly recommend it. I tested it for seven days. This is my thoughts on the actual WordPress theme. And then over here, I kind of go into detail about the actual WordPress theme. So you'll be doing the same exact thing here. So I'll even go ahead and just copy this. You can even put your coupon code or discount if you get them from companies. And then I'll just paste that in there like that. Now also we have the ratings tab. So if I click on ratings tab, now we can go ahead and put in the ratings. So for example, the scores. So here we have five stars. And if I open this, what was five stars? Well, the price. The price was really, really good, right? So the price gets a five star in my book. Now, what's the next five star? Well, the features, right? So what did the Phantom drone have? Well, it, it had a four and I'll explain why. So that's essentially uh, why you have features. Next, I'll go ahead and add in something else. I'll add in the support. So how is the support uh, with the Phantom drone company? Is it good? Do they pick up their phone? Do we have any problems? You know, I'll give them a three in that, in that case just because I don't think they're that good, right? This can be something like the quality. So for example, is it good quality? You know, how is the how is the Mavic drone's quality? Is it plastic? Is it, you know, is it metal? What's the quality of it? So here I'll give it a, a review of five and I'll leave it at that. So for example, here we have this blog post, right? So we have the quick summary. It'll be displayed there automatically. We have these specs and then we have the pros and the cons. It's really neatly organized and it'll really help your users understand more about the product. So for example, you know, we'll just say uh, the product specs and then I'll put something like a camera, right? And then for the value, I'll put 4K. So I'm telling people, you know, it's a 4K camera that comes with this specific drone. And then here I'll add in something else. Like I'll, I'll put a, what is it? Top speed, top speed. And this will be something like, uh, I don't know, 30 miles per hour, right? 30 miles per hour. And then I'll add in one more and this will be something like the, the height, so max height. I don't know if you guys have drones, but uh, some of these drones can't go too high. I'll just put uh, 3,000 feet, something like that. So essentially, I'm just giving product specs about the specific product, and this will just really help your user, you know, really find their information and just click on your link, you know? The, the overall goal here is to provide value, but it's also to make money at the same time. So now we have the actual pros and the cons. So what's the pro about it? Well. It's very fast, very fast, right? Very fast. And also another uh, pro about this is that it's a uh, lightweight, something like that. And that's enough. Now for the cons, what I'll do is I'll just say, the biggest con is that this is expensive, you know, expensive. And I'll add another item. And this will be something like the support sucks. You know, support is bad, right? Something like that. Overall right now, our blog post is ready to be published. And now I can go ahead and publish this post. Next, let's go ahead and view this product review. And here we go. Now you can change the size of this image as well with the theme customizer. Just remember that this is a default image and you can change the size of the image in the theme customizer under featured image. All right, so we have the drone. And then we also have the overall score. So the really cool thing about this whole feature is that this will automatically propagate all of your stars and give it an overall score. And then we can click on buy on Amazon. And if they click on this link, it'll then take them to Amazon. And if they buy it, cha-ching, you make money. And then we also have read more. You can take them to any other part of the website. You can take them to a different article. It's just something to kind of back up your statements and also maybe provide an alternative. So maybe you can even change this to need an alternative and then link them to another product. Here is the general overview. It's like, all right, the drone is the best theme. You know, it has some good features. You can customize it. I recommend it. It's really simple to use. And just a small overview of the actual product. And then we have our specs right here, pros and cons and then why we use it. And then this is the actual contents of the article. And then we have our social sharing things at the bottom. And yeah, so this article looks fantastic. And I think you're really gonna like to use the single product reviews. 
All right, so we're gonna write our first blog post soon, but I also wanna give you guys free templates that you guys can use on your Amazon affiliate marketing websites. Now, we actually made these from scratch for all of you and we're giving them all away for free. So here you guys have seen these tables and you guys have probably seen these on the internet where you have those review websites. Now we created these personally for you guys and you guys can use these on your website. So you guys can just upload it. You can swap the image, just change the title and everything is all good to go. And we're gonna use one of these tables in the very next section. Now I also have other posts as well. So these are tables and we also have specific posts. So if you wanna structure your posts in different ways, you guys can go ahead and check out this website and check out the other posts. And again, you guys will get all these for free um, in this package that we're gonna give you. So uh, to get these posts and everything, what you'll first do is go to my website, darylson.com, and under view layouts, you guys can download the layout for free. So if you, I think it's on page two here. Yeah, page two, I have other layouts, tons of them for other videos. And this is the one that you need right here. It's the Elementor Affiliate Marketing Templates. Now I'll go ahead and put this product as well in the description below so you guys don't have to navigate my website and try to find it. And um, what you'll do is just click on Add to Cart, View the Cart, and then Proceed to Checkout. And then you'll go ahead and just place the order. And you don't have to pay nothing. You don't even have to make an account. It's completely free. And then right here, you'll click on a Download Elementor Affiliate Kits. Now once you guys do that, you guys will get a zip folder and um, close that. And uh, it looks something like this right here and you'll just double click on it and then you'll have access to all these JSON files. Now, the one that we're gonna use in the next section is the affiliate tables. So there are other uh, you know parts of the website where you guys can use, but for this specific part of the tutorial, we'll just be using the actual tables. So it's really simple to upload a table. So all you'll do is you'll just go to plus post and just make a brand new post. And this could be something like the, you know, the, the drone review, whatever you're gonna write about. And again, we're gonna talk more about writing in the next section. And I'm also gonna show you how to structure your content and give you key rules to follow when you're writing your blog post, make sure you're not penalized. And then this is a test. This is a test, or here, test. And then right here, you'll just click on edit with Elementor. Now, you, there's a few ways on how you can upload the Elementor templates, but I'll just show you how to do it from the front end because some users don't like using the back end. So you'll get this folder right here. Just go ahead and click on the actual folder. And then what you'll do is click on my templates and then you'll see this little arrow right here. So go ahead and click on this and select the file. And I'll go ahead and uh, affiliates. And then here we have the affiliate tables and I'll click on open. And now I'm going to import these uh, tables onto my website. All right, and then right here is affiliate marketing tables. I'll click on insert and click on yes. All right, so now you'll see that we have these tables are uploaded and all you need to do now is just go ahead and change the image, change the title and then the description and everything is all good to go. So you guys can use these on your websites and I find these are very hard to make. That's why we made them because I know it looks easy, but there's a lot of res responsive stuff you gotta do and sizing and it's kind of a pain in the ass. So that's why we just made these just to make this a lot easier for you guys. So you guys can just use these and you guys can duplicate them and so on and so forth. So that's how you would upload these templates to your website. You guys can also use the other posts as well. And again, Alex is gonna use this specific template in the next section of the video. Now, before we actually write the post, I just wanna talk about some rules to follow when you are writing your blog post. And I'll be having another video that goes more in depth that talks about blog posts, but I just wanna skim over a lot of information that you might need to know before you write your blog post. So for example, you know, try not to keyword stuff. You know, when you're writing a blog post about something like how to make a website, your article shouldn't include how to make a website more than 4% of your article because that's called keyword stuffing and Google does not like that and they will penalize you. So please do not keyword stuff. It's a quick way to get your website on page 500. And also the amount of content. So a lot of people ask me, how much content should I write? Well, this is from backlingo.com and they found that when you have more content, the better, you know? So you can see how uh, articles with zero to 1000 words are ranking and then the more they write, the more the more of traffic they get and the better the actual article ranks itself because Google finds that the content is more relevant. So that's something to consider when you're writing blog posts. And again, I will leave this whole Evernote in the description below so you guys can access it anytime you guys need help or you want to refer back to it. Also, make sure to add in alt alternative text to your images. So this is very important because 
Right here, for example, we have best drones for high quality videos or best drones for this. Now, the reason why you write alternative text is because you guys ever gone to Google Images and typed in best drones to buy or whatever? A lot of these images are placed here because users put the alternative text. So if you do not place alternative text, there's a good chance your image will not show up. And I highly recommend to put the alternative text because you're getting traffic from not only the images section, but you're also getting traffic from the actual Google search. So when you are uploading images to your website, make sure you fill in the alternative text and describe the purpose of the actual image. All right, so that's just something to consider. Now, also you might be wondering, Zero, you know, I'm, I'm illiterate, you know, I don't know how to write a blog post. I don't know the structure. I don't know anything. So we've actually made this whole structure for you so you guys can follow this along. And Alex will kind of touch base on this about why H2s and H3s are more important and everything. So for example, this is the title of your article, your H1 tag, and then your featured image, right? So for example, we have this article, we have the drone, and then we have just some description. Now we are missing the H2 tags in here, and we're gonna walk you through on how to make a really good optimized post. So this will be like the subheader. So this is kind of like the opening about your paragraph. So what am I gonna talk about? And then you have the subheader. So now let's talk about drone. So let's talk about like, you know, why you should buy a drone, top three things to look at when you're buying a drone. And then here is like the actual meat of your content. So like the top five best drones to buy now that you're, you know, you know more about drones. So then you can put your main content here and then you can also add like a, a, a closing, you know? So, you know, guys, when you're looking for drones, make sure to consider this, consider that. Also, you might wanna check out our other article about how to buy drones and then you can go ahead and link them to another article. So when you are finishing the end of your article, make sure to actually include some sort of interlink to another article or just kind of, uh, you know, finish it off with a, a sales pitch or a call to action of some sort or even an email opt-in just to kind of maximize uh, the blog post as much as possible. So now we're talking about interlinking. So when you are writing blog posts, guys, it's very important to interlink articles. So for example, here's an article created by Yoast. And when you read this article by Yoast, you might notice that they have links to other articles that they have within their websites. Google loves interlinking and they find it that it makes the website easier for users to navigate. So by offering interlinking on your website, Google will actually recognize this and they might actually boost you up in the rankings because they find that websites that interlink articles together just are more relevant. So you can see here how they uh, have a, a hyperlink under search intent. So they teach you all about search intent. They have another one over here about search terms. So how to find search terms, what is keyword research? And then you can click on these articles and this will take them to another article. So essentially the website is trying to keep the user on the website as much as possible. And Google finds this really uh, helpful for users. And uh, interlinking is a big strategy. So you wanna make sure that you interlink your other articles together. So for example, if you're writing a blog post right here on drones, you might wanna talk about, ooh, the best uh, phones for drones or the best this for drones. And then you can link that article in that specific uh, article. So make sure to interlink articles, it's very important. And then also I have some other notes for all of you about things to look out for. So make sure just to read all of this and just get as much information as you can. Again, I'll be making a whole nother video on blog posts, domain authority, and all this other stuff. So uh, yeah, be sure to check that out. Now, once you guys actually learn the fundamentals of writing blog posts, you guys can actually hire full-time content writers to write content for your website. And I find that it's a little bit easier. So, you know, texan.com where you guys can, um, you know, hire someone to write about your content and then also be a KA content. Alex will actually have some discounts for you on these uh, websites in the description below. But once you learn like the fundamentals of blogging and you feel more comfortable, then you can kind of monitor your writers and make sure they're writing appropriate content for your websites. So I just wanted to cover a little bit about that before we start writing blog posts with Alex. Also everybody, I do wanna invite all of you guys to watch my Rank Math tutorial. Now in this next section as well, Alex is going to be using the Rank Math SEO plugin. Now I'm not gonna walk you through on how to use the plugin step by step because I've already created a video for that. This is for SEO. So essentially this is how your website looks in the search engine. So for example, in this video, we optimize a website and this is how you can get your affiliate marketing websites to look how you want in the search engine. So what I'll do over here is I will go over here to plugins and go to add new. And under search plugins, you'll type in rank math. And uh, what you'll do here is, well, I have to update mine, but you'll just click on install now and activate. 
and then you'll get a new tab right here that says rank math. Now, uh, we're gonna optimize one of your posts, so you will need this plugin, and Alex will walk you through on how to do that. And again, if you want to verify your website with Google, you wanna submit your sitemap, and you wanna optimize your website, I highly recommend to watch this video. I just made it, you guys can see it's February 26th, and we go through all the settings to make sure that your website is fully optimized for all major search engines. So be sure to check that out. But you will need this plugin uh, for the next section so you can optimize your posts with Rank Math. Congratulations, now your website is finished and you're all ready to go. Now at this point, you can start writing blog posts and you can start getting traffic to your Amazon affiliate marketing websites. Now in this part of the video, I'll be handing the video over to Alex where he's going to help you complete your Amazon affiliate marketing website. He's very knowledgeable and he really knows his stuff. So with that said, here he is. Hello, it's Alex here. First off, I wanna say thank you to Daryl for inviting me back again to contribute to one of his fantastic tutorials. For those of you that don't know who I am, as I said, my name is Alex. I've got a YouTube channel called WP Eagle, and on there I create videos all around WordPress. And in particular, I create videos around using WordPress for affiliate marketing. Some of my most popular videos on the channel are my case study videos where I basically create an affiliate marketing website. And I then document the progress of that site with a monthly update video. And I basically share the traffic numbers, the revenue, all the work that I've done on the site. So you can basically see what it's like to be a real life affiliate marketeer, the ups and downs, the money you can earn and, and all that stuff. So if you've not seen them, do go check them out. There'll be links in the description to the playlists on my channel, which are full of those videos. So Daryl's asked me to cover a few things in this video. They include how to choose a niche or a niche for your website, how to come up with ideas for content because content is gonna be very important. Content is the lifeblood of your website. It's what's gonna bring traffic in and it's what's ultimately gonna generate you your revenue. I'm gonna show you how to sign up with Amazon as an associate or affiliate, the way you like to say it. And I'm gonna show you the tools that they give you, how you can create your special tracking links. So that when someone clicks through those links, you get paid a commission. And we're gonna be taking a look around Amazon and finding some really good products to promote. I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can do that and how you can kind of write about products even if you don't own the product. Once we've got some products and we've got some ideas for content, I'm gonna show you how you can put that content together, how you can basically write some content. I tend to use writers, but I'm gonna show you how you can structure an article and some very important things you need to keep in mind to ensure that it's gonna rank well on Google and the other search engines. Once we've got our content created, I'm gonna jump onto the computer and add it to the fantastic site that Daryl's created. And then once we've added the content, I'm gonna show you how you can optimize it with the fantastic Rank Math SEO plugin. So to start with, I wanna make it very clear what an affiliate marketing website is, because there's probably a few of you out there that are thinking, you know, what is the point of an affiliate marketing website? Why on earth would anyone visit an affiliate marketing website? Surely they'd just go to Amazon and just order what they want. Well, yeah, a lot of people do that because they're clear in their mind what they do want. There's a whole load of people out there that know they want something or they need something. Maybe they've got a problem they need to overcome. Maybe they're trying to do a certain task and they know they need a tool or, or something to help them with that. And they're just a little bit unsure. You know, they're ready to buy, nearly. They just need a little bit of hand-holding, pointing in the right direction, some recommendations made to them to uh, help them make that final purchase. And that's where an affiliate marketeer comes in. We're there to answer their questions and to guide them towards the perfect product for them. That's why content is so important for an affiliate marketing website. Content is what's gonna pull visitors in from Google. And basically, the more content you've got, the more traffic your website's gonna get, and ultimately, the more money you're gonna earn. So let me give you a real world example. I'm gonna use one of my case study sites, bestroofbox.com. We've got a load of articles on there, and one of them is this one. It's basically a guide on choosing the best roof box for your car for camping equipment. It's a very popular reason for buying a roof box. By the way, if you don't know what a roof box is, <laughs> maybe I should be clear. It's a box that you put on the roof of your car and it gives you loads more storage space so you can take more stuff with you when you're you know, going on a road trip. But anyway, yeah, I've got this article on the best roof box for camping. So when anyone does a search on Google looking for a roof box suitable for camping equipment, my article comes up. My article recommends a number of roof boxes that are perfect for camping equipment. And of course, when someone clicks through, 
and buys one of those roof boxes, or indeed buys anything from Amazon, within 24 hours of clicking my link, I earn a commission. So basically that's what affiliate marketing is all about. You're there to add value by helping people make a purchase, by guiding them towards what they need for whatever it is they wanna do. Okay, so let's talk about choosing a niche or a niche, depending on how you like to say it. A lot of people get stuck on this. They spend a lot of time. They kind of just can't move forward because they're desperately trying to find the perfect niche. Well, it's actually quite hard to find the perfect niche and you often don't know until you actually get started. Um, but here's a few little tips and ideas to help you choose something that should hopefully work well for you. The first thing you wanna do is look at yourself. Look at what you're into. What interests are you into? What hobbies have you got? What experience, what knowledge could you share with the internet uh, via an affiliate marketing website to help people make a purchase? So maybe you're into sports. Maybe there's a particular sport you're really good at and you know lots of stuff about it. Maybe you can write about that. Uh, maybe you're good with your hands. Maybe you're, you know, you're crafty or you, you're good at DIY. There's gonna be something that you are good at or something that you're into that might lend itself very well to an affiliate marketing website. I call this an interest-based approach because you're starting from an interest point of view. And uh, yeah, by the way, if you haven't got any of your own hobbies or interests, you can go check out the Wikipedia page on hobbies. Uh, there's a whole load on there, so maybe one of them might work for you. Another way with coming up with a niche idea is what I call a product-based approach. And that's how I came up with the idea for bestroofbox.com. I was looking for a product, I was looking for a roof box uh, for my car, and there wasn't much information on the internet about my particular make of car and roof boxes. I thought, well, maybe I could fill that gap. And yeah, that's how Best Roof Box came about. So Amazon is a good place to start on this. The first thing I'd say is go and check out the Amazon commission rates because these do vary uh, between the different categories of product on Amazon. And indeed they vary between the different Amazon countries. So if you're thinking of promoting amazon.com to the US market, do a search on Google for the amazon.com affiliate commission rates and you'll see a page. And on there it lists off all the different categories and the different commission rates. I'd recommend you choose something with at least a 3% commission rate. I know that doesn't sound very high, but people do tend to order quite a bit on Amazon and the conversion rate is also very high. So it can still generate a nice income. You might also wanna check out some of the other countries. So do a search for Amazon commission rates UK and you'll also see a big table of categories and commission rates and they're much more generous in other countries that aren't amazon.com. So that might be worth considering. Once you've chosen a category that has a reasonable commission rate, get onto Amazon and drill into the store directory and then just start diving deep within those categories and you'll be surprised how deep they go within Amazon. When you're looking around on Amazon, you're looking for a few different things when it comes to choosing a product niche. First thing is you wanna find some products that people will need a little bit of assistance when it comes to choosing the right one, which is why roof boxes is a great niche because it's a little bit confusing choosing the right roof box for a car. I'd recommend opening another tab in your browser, firing up Google and just typing in some things around the products you're looking at and seeing if people are typing in questions like, you know, what is the best roof box for fishing? Or what is the best wheelbarrow for moving concrete? You know, that kind of thing. Have a look and it should become quite clear whether there's a lot of interest in those products and whether people are asking a lot of questions about them. Whilst you're on Google looking at those questions, you're also gonna to wanna to have a look at the other sites that are coming up for those searches. You know, are they well served with content? Is there content out there that's actually answering the question specifically? Because if there isn't, that's a great opportunity for you. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to check is the product price range. You don't really wanna be promoting stuff that's less than $100 because, you know, if you remember what those commission rates were on Amazon, they're pretty low. So the higher the value, the better. You might also wanna check out if there are other merchants that you could possibly sign up as an affiliate for, uh, you know, have some extra options on your site that aren't just Amazon. And you also wanna check if there's any digital or recurring products that are out there on the internet that you could also promote. So that could be software, training courses, uh, eBooks, all that kind of thing, because those products generally pay a much higher commission. And if you can sell a recurring product, you know, something like web hosting or domain names, or, you know, some software that's on a recurring license, that can be really lucrative. A few other quick tips I wanna give you on choosing a niche. First is avoid YMYL niches or niches. 
So these are things to do with money or health, basically because Google is looking for accredited professional people to kind of write stuff in those niches, so doctors or financial advisors. I'm not saying that it can't be done, um, but it's just a little bit more difficult to do well in those niches. So yeah, avoid YM, YL niches. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to check is seasonality, and you can do this with the Google Trends tool. Now seasonality isn't necessarily a bad thing, you just need to be aware of it. You need to know if your website's gonna create a lot of revenue in the summer and not in the winter, just so that you can kind of plan around it. Now I've got a number of websites that are seasonal. It's not a big deal. And in fact, if you get it right and you create one that's good in the summer and one that does well in the winter, you can have a kind of consistent level of income. But yeah, just be aware of seasonality. Final thing you wanna keep in mind is whether you like the product and the niche because it's gonna be a lot easier if it's something that you do like, something that you've got a bit of interest in. Uh, it's just gonna be more motivating and especially if you're writing your own content, that's gonna really help. Now, I put together a little spreadsheet that I use when I'm planning my affiliate marketing websites to help me choose a niche. And you'll find a link to that spreadsheet in the description. Basically what you wanna do is just fill in the different boxes and they're gonna turn different colors, either red, yellow, or green. And once you've completed all the boxes, you're gonna to wanna to look at the sheet. And the niches that have more green are probably gonna be the ones for you. The ones that have got a lot of red are probably best avoided. The sheet's also got a tab to help you plan your articles. And basically to come up with ideas for content, I like to use Google. Similar to what I just showed you, where you go to Google, you type in the keyword or something to do with the niche you're looking to create a site on and just see what Google suggests. One way to force loads of suggestions from Google is to use the alphabet method. So you just basically type in something to your niche and then you just go through the letters of the alphabet and see what's coming up. You're gonna to wanna to make a note of all of the suggestions that are coming up that look like they could become a really good article because those suggestions are great article ideas. We we'll also suggest that you check out the question area on Google because there's some great ideas for content in there. And by the way, if you click on the questions, Google will serve you more questions. It's like an infinite display of questions. So go through those and see which ones would make great articles for your website. You might also wanna do a few little searches on them just to see what the competition's like. And basically you're gonna be wanting to look for um, topics and questions that don't have a lot of content around them. I mean, Google will of course serve content, but you wanna see how accurate that content is to the search. Is it answering the question? And is it answering it well and accurately? Stick all the ideas in the first column in the sheet. And in a few moments, I'll show you how you can develop those out into article ideas. There are a few tools available that can help with keyword research. I quite like keywords everywhere. It's a little extension that plugs into your browser. You do have to pay for it. It's not very expensive. It gives you a volume figure, which is kind of indication of how popular a particular search is. I'll take that number with a pinch of salt. Uh, for example, I wouldn't disregard keywords that have a zero volume because you know if they're coming up in Google Suggest, there's a good chance that people are using them and there's a good chance that it would make a good article. These tools are also useful because they give you a few more suggestions. Um, but you know, you can just use Google. I tend to just use Google and you can get enough information from Google without having any fancy tools, but you might wanna check them out. And if you do, you'll find links to tools that myself and Daryl recommend in the description. So I did a little bit of research on Google to come up with an idea for an article as an example for you guys in this video. I did some searches around, you know, best drones for A, for B, for C, for D, just to see what was coming up. I also did another variation of that. I did best drones with A, with B, with C, and there was loads of ideas coming up. Um, so, you know, there's plenty to write about in the drones niche. I decided to go with the keyword best drone with camera for under $200. And when I was looking at the search results page, there were also a few other questions that looked pretty interesting. And what I'm gonna do is take those and create an article around them. So the main title of the article is gonna be best drones for under $200. And by the way, don't worry too much about plurals and things. You know, people might be searching best drone for whatever, but you can write an article around best drones for, that's fine. And then, yeah, I took a few questions off the Google search results page just to kind of make the article uh, more relevant and to also fit with what Google thinks are associated terms. So you can see there was a question on, are cheap drones any good? Uh, I thought I'd include that one in there. There's also a question there on what is the cheapest camera drone? So I'm gonna combine all those together into an article. 
So now we've got an idea for an article. We should go and find some products to talk about within that article. Best place to do that is Amazon, of course. Basically do a search. I'm gonna be looking for drones that are under $200 that have a video camera or that can record video. And once I found a few that look good, I'm gonna start narrowing it down and I'm gonna narrow it down by their rating. I basically wanna promote products that are good. So I'm looking for at least four stars, preferably five stars. I'm then gonna be checking stock levels. I wanna promote stuff that's in stock or that's gonna be in stock very soon. I wanna promote products that are out of stock with no sign of them returning to Amazon. Uh, that's just not gonna work. I'm then gonna drill into the product. I'm gonna look at the product pages. There's loads of good information on the Amazon product pages. I'm basically looking for the questions and the answers because that could make some really useful content for my article. I'm also gonna read some of the reviews and I'm gonna make a note of the good points and the bad points that people are sharing um, because yeah, I'm gonna use that within the article as well. Now, of course, I'm not gonna be copying and pasting stuff from Amazon into my article. I'm gonna rewrite it and put my own spin and slant on everything that I discover. So by going through this process, you should be able to get a list of products that you wanna promote within your article and a load of ideas on stuff you can write about regarding those products. Now, of course, you're gonna to want to add links to those products on Amazon, and you're gonna to wanna to add affiliate links so that you get paid a commission. So now's probably a good time to sign up as an affiliate with Amazon if you haven't done so already. You can do that by scrolling down to the footer on Amazon's website, and you'll see a link to become an affiliate or the Amazon Associate Program. I don't know, they change the name of it all the time. But yeah, just click that. You then need to sign in to Amazon and fill in a few details, you know, name, address, and the websites that you're gonna be promoting Amazon on, and they're gonna ask you a few other questions. Once you've completed this process, you'll get instant access to the tools that you need to create your affiliate links. And basically you get a bar across the top of Amazon, so that when you're looking at a product on Amazon, you can generate a tracking link, you can pull down images, and yeah, you can basically do everything you need to do as an affiliate. Now you might be thinking, but my site's not ready yet. Maybe I should wait to sign up as an affiliate. Well, no, you should sign up right now because you're gonna to wanna to add those links straight away to your content. And Amazon are only gonna come and take a look at your site once you start sending them some traffic and you start generating some sales. Once that happens, someone from Amazon will come and take a look at your site and providing that you know it's all okay and it checks out and it's not in breach of any of their terms and conditions, you'll be approved and then you'll start getting paid. <laughs> and that's basically all there is to it. Talking about getting approved, there's a few common mistakes people make that prevents them from getting approved and indeed getting kicked out of the Amazon affiliate program. I did a video on this a little while back. There'll be a link in the description to that video and it covers some of those reasons. Don't worry if you do get rejected, it's not a big deal. You can apply again and you can start again. You will get new tracking IDs. So just be aware of that, although it's very easy to update them if you've already added the links, providing that when you insert links using the Amazon site stripe, you use the full link and we'll be going into that in a bit more detail a little bit later on. So I think we're ready now to put our piece of content together to prepare our article. We know what we're gonna be writing about. We know what subheadings we need. We know which products we're gonna be promoting. We're signed up as an Amazon affiliate so we can insert links and insert images. So yeah, I'm gonna get on the computer. I'm gonna show you how to put the article together. I'm also gonna show you how to add it to the website that Daryl created using Elementor. And then once we've done that, I'm gonna show you how to use the Rank Math SEO plugin just to make sure it's uh, you know good for Google and the other search engines. So let's go. So the article that I'm gonna be creating as an example is gonna be around this term, which is best drone with camera under 200. It was a suggestion within Google and I thought it'd make a good article. If I look at the competition, there is a few articles on best drones for under $200. But if you look very carefully, they don't actually mention camera in the title. So I'm hoping that might be an opportunity. There's this one that does, um, but most of them don't. So on the right hand side of my screen here, I've got the niche website planning spreadsheet, which of course is linked to in the description of this video. You can uh, use it. It's basically got two tabs. It's got the niche finder that we were looking at earlier to help choose our niche. And then it's got this article planner tab. Remember, you need to make a copy of this spreadsheet to use it, so just go to File and then make a copy and it'll save it to your Google Docs. So if we look over here, the first column is the status column, which you can just use as a kind of management thing, so you can see whether your article's been written or it's being written or it's published, you know, whatever you like. You can obviously change those if you need to. 
Here is the ideas from Google. So this is where you would put all of your keywords that are suggested in Google and you can store them here so that you have got a nice uh, organized place to keep them. Next, we've got the article title. So this is based on the keyword and you do really wanna include the keyword in your article title. It's really good for SEO. Um, it helps the search engines determine what the article's about. And we'll be going into the SEO a little bit later when we publish the article to the website. So I've gone the best drones with cameras for under $200, hour four pics. Now I have added a little bit of plural there. You can see that the search term is best drone with camera and I've added drones with cameras uh, and added the word four and the dollar sign. It's close enough for Google. I know Google's intelligent enough to know that this is about um, what people are searching for, the two kind of match up. So you've got a little bit of flexibility, you can make your title readable uh, while still kind of maintaining the keyword that you found in the Google Suggest. Let's scroll across. The next column is for your subheadings. I've got two here, you could obviously add as many as you like. However, I would say that when you are writing articles, you do wanna keep them specific. You don't wanna dilute them too much. You don't wanna kind of waffle off on different subjects. You don't wanna dilute the message of the article. So I've gone for what is the best drone under $200 and are cheap camera drones any good? And I got these ideas just simply from scrolling down on Google and looking in the people also ask. So you know, there's the what is the best drone under $200 and here is are cheap camera drones any good? Now I know that because they're coming up for this search term that Google thinks they're related. So therefore if I write an article that includes them, Google's gonna see it as highly relevant. Next is all the product information. So I've basically been over to Amazon. Let's fire up Amazon now. Here we are, and I did a search for drone, or drones, doesn't really matter. I then filtered by price, so I put a maximum of 200. And then I basically just went through the products looking at the ones that have got good reviews, um, that kind of fit the criteria, that weren't too cheap. I didn't want anything ridiculously cheap, I wanted it um, kind of around $100 and all the way up to $200, and get a decent commission. And yeah, I just kind of went through, picked out four good looking drones. And then once I'd found the drones that I liked, I started filling in this spreadsheet. So let me just show you how I've done that. So I went through the Amazon product page, there are tons of information on here, and just started making a note of the, uh, the positives and the negatives that I could see on here. So see there was a 4K camera, made a note of that as a pro. Then I see there's a GPS positioning system, let's put that on as a, as a pro. GPS, that'll be fine. Uh, need a little bullet, these aren't actually real bullets, it's a little bit of a pain spreadsheets to be fair, but we'll go with it. And what else have we got? 16 minute flying time, so that's a good advantage as well. And you get the idea. Now to get the next bit of information, which is, let's move across, the cons or the disadvantages, what you need to do is scroll down and get into the uh, review section. And you wanna look at you know, some of the more negative reviews and you'll see people making comments about stuff and I picked up that the smartphone app wasn't very good and that the build quality of the drone was a little bit flimsy. So put that down as some negative uh, things about that product. All the pros and cons and all the links. I'm gonna show you how you can generate your affiliate link in a moment. Hopefully you're already signed up with Amazon. So I've got everything I need now to create my article. So I'm gonna go away and do that. I'm gonna prepare it in Word and yeah, then I'll show you exactly what I've come up with and the elements of the article that are gonna help it rank well on the search engines. So here's my article that I've prepared. I'm gonna bring out the spreadsheet again in a moment. I just wanted to quickly show you um, how you generate your affiliate links. So I've added affiliate links here to the article. So once you're signed up as an affiliate with Amazon, and remember you can sign up as an affiliate down the bottom here by clicking um, become an affiliate, just there. Once you've done that, you get access to the site stripe, which is this bar across the top of Amazon. And then when you're viewing a product, or even a category page, 
you can generate a special link by coming up here and clicking on text and, and there's your link. You get the option to choose your tracking ID if you've got multiple tracking IDs set up, which is useful for multiple sites. And you can manage these within your affiliate account, which you can access by clicking on earnings up here. But yeah, here is our link that we can use on our website and in our content. Now, make sure that you click full link. It does generate a quite long, ugly looking link, but trust me, you'll thank me later because if you ever need to update the tracking IDs, basically these tags, um, which attribute the um, clicks and the earnings to you, if you ever need to update them, maybe you sell the website, maybe you get kicked out of the Amazon program and you need to reapply and they've given you a different tracking ID, it's much easier to update the links with this full link. In fact, it's nearly impossible with this short link. So yeah, always use the full link. Then you can just copy and paste over into Word or onto your website and we're obviously gonna be pasting them into our website in a few moments. But let me just take you through this article and how I put this article together uh, from a search engine point of view. I'm just gonna fire up the spreadsheet again in this left panel. So here's the sheet. So the first thing is obviously the title, which is up here. I've put this little red label next to it so I know what it's gonna be on the website. It's gonna be a H1, that's short for header one, which is basically the most important heading you can have in an article. It tells everyone, including search engines, what the article's about. So it's very important that you include the keyword or something equivalent, as I mentioned before, when we're preparing the title. So this is close enough to that to match. Next, I've got the first opening paragraphs. And again, I've included the keyword in that first paragraph. Very good for SEO, just to you know reinforce to Google what the article's about. Next, we've got a subheading, uh, which is for this table. And again, I've included the keyword. You see that? Now I've got this table where I've basically just put together some of the details around each of the products. You can obviously decide what features you wanna include and get all this information off the Amazon product pages. When we put the table onto the website, I'm gonna show you how you can add images using the Google Site Stripe, so they're affiliate images. If people click on them, you'll get your commission if they buy. And we'll also add a button as well next to each one of these, linking through to Amazon with our affiliate link. Then we go into some details about the different products. So again, I've just kind of got all this information off of the Amazon product pages rewritten it a little bit. Um, of course, do not copy and paste stuff straight off the Amazon pages, that's not a good idea. But make a note of all the features and what people are saying about it and then put together your own paragraphs, which is what I've done here. In fact, it looks like it needs another paragraph really, it's a little bit, uh, bit lumpy that text. Here are the pros and cons, so you remember we did those earlier. So just taking these straight off the spreadsheet and then here is the affiliate link. So yeah, that's all the products and I've got a bit of writing about all four products that we are featuring. Then after the products, we've got the subheadings, which were the other search suggestions. You remember on the Google search results page under the bit people also asked, we found these and I've written a paragraph about each one of those. I've inserted an affiliate link directly into the paragraph there. And these are both gonna be H2, so that's heading two. So that's still pretty important. It's not as important as a H1, but it's still pretty important and Google's gonna add some extra weight to whatever I write here and, and go, okay, well, that's what that's about. And I'm hoping that it will increase the number of keywords that this article ranks for. You know, when someone searches for that on Google, I'm hoping that this article will come up. And Google is actually clever enough that when people click through, it will jump them straight down to this part of my article. Finally, we've got conclusion. In fact, I don't like the word conclusion. Let's go for final thought. And that would be a H2 as well, I guess, just because it will look nice. <laughs> Generally in WordPress, these headers have different sizes, so you can override them. You put that as a H2. The actual titles of the drones are all H3s. And in the final paragraph, I've again included another link through to the drone that I'm recommending. And I've also included the keyword again. So here is our article, it's ready to go, and it's ready to be added to our website. Now of course, in terms of putting articles together, 
you can write them yourself and you know once you've filled in this spreadsheet, you're halfway there, you just need to fill in the gaps really. It gives you a nice framework um, to write around or, and this is what I tend to do, I give my writers access to this spreadsheet which is really easy with Google Docs because you can just click the share button and yeah, they just work off this. So they've got everything they need, they've got all the products that I want them to include, they've got the subtitles and they just have to kind of fill it out. And that works really well. But anyway, now we've got our article, I think we should add it to the website. When we add the article to the website, we're gonna need a few images. You can of course add as many images as you like to your articles. I'm gonna add two, I'm gonna add a featured image which is the main image that appears at the top of the article. It also appears in different parts of the website like the related post section or recent post section. I'm also gonna add a Pinterest pin which is good for a couple of reasons. First is it's another image that looks really good. You can add an alt tag to it which helps for SEO and I'm gonna show you how to do that when we add it to the website. Another reason is of course you can pin it to Pinterest which generates a link back to your website. Others can also pin the pin to Pinterest. Now, I've done a video on Pinterest in the past and you'll find a link to that in the description if you wanna go check that out. But Pinterest can be a really good way of generating traffic for your website. Third reason why a Pinterest graphic can be good is they do sometimes appear on Google next to your website. So that looks really good on the Google search results page and that can encourage more clicks through to your website. Now I'm over in Canva, which is my favorite graphics program. It's free, although I have the pro subscription because with the pro subscription you get access to a whole load of stock images and you get some other features too, but the main reason is the stock images. It's a really good deal, you know, compared to signing up with a, a stock company like iStock Photo or something like that. So I do love Canva Pro. You'll find links to Canva in the description. If you want the free version, which you can do loads of stuff with, it's just canva.com. So let's start with that featured image. I'm gonna come up to the top and go create design. I'm gonna go custom size. I'm gonna go for 750 by 425, which is a good size for a featured image for this particular theme. Here we go, we've got a blank canvas. So first off, I'm gonna add a photo from the stock photo library. So I'm gonna to go to photos, do a search for drone, pick something nice, loads to choose from. I think I'll go for this one. It's fine, I'm just gonna drag that over, drop it on, perfect. Now I think we should add some text. This is of course optional. In fact, you can design your featured images however you like, but I'm gonna add a little bit of text. I'm gonna go to text. And you've got loads to choose from here. I'm gonna go with the first one. Pretty, pretty standard stuff. Let's change the text to be best drones or under $200. I'm gonna make this box a bit bigger so that it can go into a couple of lines. I'm going to change this to buyer's guide. Um, as you can see, Canva is really easy to use. Just click around, click on stuff, you can change it. Click on this text, I can make it right justified like that. This one too. We can resize it just by dragging the corner down. We can do some really cool stuff with this background. If we come up here and go edit, Got a whole load of uh, kind of filters and stuff like that, a bit like Instagram. So you know, I can make it cherry, fuchsia, pop. That's quite nice. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. Maybe have it down here. Maybe a little bit squashed like that. I think maybe if I make the 200 bigger, that'll look good. Or at least increase the line height. I'm gonna do that up here, because the 200 is a little bit close. There we go. There we go, that looks fine now. I think I'll leave that the same size. By adjusting the line height, it looks a lot better. That'll do for now. Let's click download. I'm gonna go for JPEG. I'm gonna turn the quality down a little bit, just so that we get a smaller file size. Smaller file sizes for images are good because they load quickly and they don't slow down your site. So let's click save and save it on the computer. That is beautiful. So there's our Pinterest graphic. Let's download it. Again, as a JPEG, turn the quality down a little bit. Click download. I'm gonna include the keyword again of the article. So best range for under 200, it's already there, that's perfect. I'm just gonna add the word pin on the end so I know what it is. And click save. So we've got our two images, we're now ready to add the article to the website. So, let's do it. 
So I'm over at the website, I'm logged in, ready to go. I've got my article here on the right hand side so I can easily just copy and paste stuff over. It's obviously all ready to go. We just went through it all and it's you know marked up with what's gonna be a H1 and a H2 and I'll show you how that works in WordPress in just one moment. But to start we need to create the post. So I'm gonna go up to new and then post. Posts are what you need for articles. So I'm gonna just copy and paste that in. The title is very important and should always include your keyword or the question or the phrase or whatever it is you're targeting, or at least be very similar to it, because when you add it as a title in WordPress, WordPress is gonna wrap it with a title tag, and then that combined with the H1 uh, are gonna be the two tags that Google looks at first to determine what the article is about. So get that in there, we then need to put it into a category, put it into the drone category, you can of course create more categories just by clicking on add new category. You don't wanna overdo the categories, but they're a great way of organizing your content. Tags are another way of organizing your content, you can just type them in, uh, and then stuff will be grouped together. It's useful if you're running a related posts plugin or your theme does related posts, because it will then know which posts are related by the tag. Next we've got the featured image, so we're gonna add the image we just created in Canva. I'm gonna to go to upload file, and then I'm gonna find the file on my computer, there it is. Click set featured. Next we've got the excerpt. Now this bit of text appears around the site, in different areas, and it also on this particular theme appears at the top of the post. So I'm just gonna take this first little paragraph and add that. I'm gonna copy and paste. And that's it now for this editor, which is the Gutenberg editor. We're now gonna switch over to Elementor to do the rest because Elementor gives you a lot more features and it's easier to create some really good looking content with Elementor. So I'm gonna click Publish. If you're working on a live site, you might just wanna click Save Draft and not publish it until you're completely finished. So there we go, we can view the post, see what's happened. There we go, got our featured image, got our excerpt, we've got the title. So let's get on and add the rest. We can quickly edit by clicking Edit Post again. Then I'm gonna to switch to Elementor by clicking Edit with Elementor. So let's add this first paragraph. We've already added this one, it's, it's in the excerpt. And remember, we've included the keyword again in that first um, paragraph, but you can include it in your second one as well. As long as it's near the beginning of the article, that's good for SEO. I have got a variation here. What drones priced under 200. That's very similar, but yeah, let's copy this in. So I'm just gonna put that in my clipboard. Then down here, I'm gonna add a new section. So I'm gonna click on the little plus. Just want a single column. I'm then gonna come up here, click on the little square of squares, and then drag over the text editor, drop that in. Then you can do most of your editing over here on the left-hand side. So just clean that out. Then I can paste that in. So just gonna do a Control V or Command V on a Mac. There we go. So that's that. Next we've got a heading. So if you remember, Google uses headings to determine what the article's about, so it's a good place to put keywords. We're gonna use a H2 for this one. Let me copy it. Come back up to the little square, get a heading, drag that down. Then I can just paste my text in. Now it's already set as a H2, but you can change it here. I think I'm gonna take off quick comparison actually, even though I've also noticed I spelt it wrong. But yeah, let's get rid of that. I've got the keyword perfectly inserted. Next up, we've got the table. Now Darren has already created some tables that you can use as templates. So to add one of them, I click on the little folder, go to my templates, then all Daryl's templates are here. I'm gonna insert the affiliate marketing tables, click yes, and here we go. So we've got a few tables to choose from, use whichever one you like. I'm gonna use this one at the top, so to get rid of this one, just click on the cross, cross again, and across again, it's all gone. And then here we go, we can remove the things we don't need, so I don't need this at the top. You can right click with Elemental. I can right click on this pencil and click delete. In fact, I don't need this entire section <laughs> at the top, there we go. 
So let me just make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. So I'm gonna start adding these products. I'm gonna bring them up in Amazon so I can bring over the images. Click here, that'll bring up the first one. So yeah, the first one then is this eSheen. So let's get it added. So the first thing is the image. Now here we've got this image widget or element or element. And we're not gonna use that because we need to insert the image using the Google Site Stripe, that way we don't upset Amazon and it will include our affiliate link and, and all the other tracking information. So I'm actually gonna remove this. What I'm gonna add instead is the text widget. So I'm gonna clean out this, just delete that. I'm gonna to switch to the text editor, which basically is just a, a stripped down version of the, um, the text editor. I think I've said text editor too many times there, but it's good for when you're pasting in code and stuff like that. So let's go back to Amazon. I'm gonna to go to image. I wanna make sure you've got the right tracking ID selected. You've probably only got one. I'm gonna go for large, and then I'm gonna copy this bit of code, which is in this box down here. I wanna make sure I've got all of it. Then go back to the website, paste it in. Now, if we switch back to visual, the magic should happen and we should see an image. There we go. Don't know why it hasn't updated on this side. So that's our image. Amazon will be fine with that because we use the site stripe code. It's already clickable. It's already got our affiliate link um, kind of in it or on it or within it, I don't know. Basically people click it and if they buy something, you'll get your commission. So next up we need to add the name, which is this. I'm gonna copy that from the document. So below we've got these stars. So let me quickly just say something about stars. Amazon can be a little bit funny about stars. And when I say funny, basically they don't want you to imply that the stars are anything to do with Amazon. You're not allowed to use their star rating scheme. So if you are gonna add stars, because they do look nice, you need to make it very clear that it's not the Amazon rating and that it's your rating. So you can do that by adding something like our rating. So to add that little bit of text, we can add it to the title here. Just type in our rating, maybe the colon. Now it is a little bit big, so we can adjust that uh, size within style. We've got the typography and the color here. Click on the little pencil, adjust the size. Nine seems to be pretty good, maybe eight. Might make it bold. So you don't really wanna squash the stars. I think that might be a little bit small. So you got that option if you like that, or let me take that out. You can just drop a little bit of text in. Like that, clean that out, type in our rating, like that. And again, you can adjust the size and everything in here. 12, then bold. You might want a little bit of space actually between um, the title and the rating. So you can either add some spacing by clicking on the hour rating and going to advanced, you got this margin. Or you can come up here, click on the little square, grab a spacer and drop that in. You can adjust the size here. Maybe 20. There we go, that looks okay. So next we can come over here and start to add some of the other information. So for example, we've got the uh, dimensions. Grab them. The bottom one here is actually dimensions. So here are those items. If I click on the bottom one, I can then just highlight all that. I did a Command A or a Control A to highlight everything. Delete it, paste in the new one. We've got the weight here. So again, click on here, paste it in. If you wanna add more, you can just click the Add Item at the bottom. We've got this button here to duplicate stuff if you wanna make a copy of, a, of an item. Next, we've got the flying time, so 16 minutes flying time. And then we've got a 4K video capture. In fact, when I look down here, we've got a few other little um, advantages, so let's add one more, why not? Let me duplicate 4K video capture, and let's put in 120 degree field of view. Yeah, obviously, you can put in as many Benefits as you like. So next in the table, we've got price. Now price is a bit of a touchy subject with Amazon. 
They don't like you showing prices because they can change all the time and before you know it, your table will be out of date. The one way around this is to use a plugin that uses the Amazon API to update the prices every single day. A plugin like AAWP, which I really love. You'll find a link in the description to that. I've done a few videos on it, so you'll find links to those as well. But for now, I'm gonna remove this column, this price column, I'm just gonna right click and go delete. Now I like this little cup, I mean you could use this column for anything you like. It's just an icon widget. I'm gonna make it a gold one, like that. I'm gonna add a little bit of text underneath. Just dropping that in. Call it editor's choice. I'm gonna have another little cup for the next one which will be like a silver or a bronze or something like that. So highly recommended. But yeah, use this as you like, add icons, add some text up to you. Now I'm just gonna center that by going to style and then alignment center. Maybe even make it bold by going into typography and then wait. That looks nice. Then finally we've got this button. So if we click on that, we can adjust it. I'm gonna change the text to check latest price on Amazon that creates a bit of intrigue. People then click through to check the price and of course once they've clicked through, they're then cookied for 24 hours and you'll get a commission on any purchase within that time. We've got all the button options here over the left hand side, we can change the background color, you know, green or whatever color you like. The blue works pretty well, doesn't it? So it's really up to you what color we go for. I actually want it back to the same blue that it was. What, what's that, uh, there we go. Color code down the bottom here which is very useful. So you can identify a specific color and you can just enter them in like that. Perfect, so the final thing we need to do with this button is add our affiliate link. So if we go back to the product page on Amazon, click on text, here's our link. Now you must use the full link. You'll thank me later, it just makes it a lot easier if you ever need to update the links with new tracking IDs. Say for example, you sell your website or you have to sign up with Amazon again for whatever reason, make sure you got the full links. So I'm just gonna copy all of that, go back to the website, and then back to content for the button, I've got the button selected, and paste it into this link box. Then let's click update, and we've done our first product. Let's take a look, shall we? I'm gonna come up here and go view page. Perfect. So what I'll do is I'll quickly add these other products, then we'll crack on with the rest of the article. So I've got all my drones added to the table, it's looking good. Quick couple of pointers on the tables. Um, first is if you wanna quickly duplicate one of these rows, just come up to the section tab thing here, right click and then duplicate. That makes it easy to kind of build out your table. The other point I just quickly wanna add is that when you are adding links to buttons, or anything really, that's not a site stripe image, you know, cause these already have their links built in, but um, yeah, any buttons or anything like that, make sure that when you've added the link, you go into the link options, which is the little cog there, and set them to open in a new window and add a no follow. The no follow is good for SEO, basically keeps hold of some of your link juice. And open a new window, I think that's just good practice that external links open in a new window or a new tab. So yeah, just make sure you do that on all your links. I need to do it on mine, look. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to add the rest of this content. So we've got this information here about the different products. So we're gonna add that below this table. I'm gonna add a new section. Basically, I'm gonna put each product in its own section so that I can move them around in the future if I need to. Next, we're gonna add a heading free. You see we've marked it up as a H3. So the product names are not as important as the other uh, headings on the article because you know we're looking to rank for best drones for under $200, so that's more important. I'm not really looking to rank for the um, drone names. If I was looking to do that, I would create an article around each one of these drones. Let's come up to a little square, grab a heading. Let's copy this. 
I'm gonna set this as a H3 or make it slightly smaller, but you can actually override the size here if you need to. Then I'm gonna add this text, so let's grab a text editor widget. Okay, and then we've got this pros and cons. Now we could just add it like that with a you know a heading and some bullet points. I'm gonna try something a little bit different. This kind of shows the flexibility of Elementor. You can do a lot of things with it. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna add an inner section. I'm just gonna drop that there, because that gives me two columns. Then what I'm gonna do on this side, I'm gonna add an icon. Oh, hang on, no, I wanted it in here, thank you. There we go. I'm gonna change the icon just by clicking on it to a thumbs up. I'll go with that one. Then I'm gonna add a heading below the icon. Uh, and rather than pros, I'm gonna make it a little bit more friendly, what we like. I'll make that a H4, maybe even a H5. H5 is not important in terms of Google, and I want it a little bit smaller. Then I'm gonna add the bullets, so back to the square. Let's just scroll down. I think I'm gonna use this icon list. So drop that there. Then I'm gonna start filling it in. So here we go, 4K high resolution camera. So come over here, click on this first list, which is the one with the tick. Get rid of that bullet. I'm gonna get rid of these two. I'm gonna duplicate that one. Click on that second one, change it. It's bringing over the bullet from where, so I'm gonna take that out. Duplicate again. Then the final one. Perfect. Now I'm gonna make this column stand out a little bit, so I'm gonna change the background. So I'm right click there, clicked Edit Column. I'm gonna to go to Style. Background type, I'm gonna go for Classic. Then here, I'm gonna choose a color. I just want a green. A nice, friendly green. So like that would be fine. Now we can't really see the text very well, so we need to change this color. So click on the icon list, go to style, go to text, text color here. I'm just gonna change it to white. Same with the icon color. So I went to icon, color, get the white again. Perfect. Change this icon. So again, style, primary color, white, and what we like. Style again. Text color white. I think we're gonna add a little bit more padding to the whole thing. So I'm gonna click on this column, go to advanced and this padding. I'm gonna link the values together, they already are. Let's turn this up a bit. Maybe 30 might be good. A little bit more. 35 looks great. Now what I'm actually gonna do, save me a bit of time, I'm just gonna duplicate this. So right click on the little column icon, click duplicate. I want this one, I'm gonna get rid of that one. There we go, and I'm gonna change this to be the what we don't like. So change that to a thumbs down. Add the word don't. Smartphone app could be better. And flimsy build. We add the word quality there, might be better. Perfect. And we don't need any others because we've only got two things we don't like, so I'm just gonna click on the cross here for that one and that one. Actually on these, I'm gonna change the icon to be a cross. Have we got a cross? Okay, I had a quick scroll through, I found one. It's actually times, that's in times table. So there we go, we'll go for that. And this one too, the flimsy build quality, times, perfect. Then we'll just make this background red. So I click edit column, into style. Oh, that's a perfect red right there. Then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna save this so I can use it again. I'm gonna right click, save as template, pros and cons, save. So that's now in the my template section of Elementor. I wanna add it, just click on this little gray folder template icon and there it is. So that's the pros and cons done. The final thing I wanna to add to this product is a link, of course, to Amazon. And also I think we should add a little image of the product as well. 
So um, let's add the image first. I'm gonna basically go into Amazon again. Let me just click on the link for this product here. Close these tabs, don't need them. So I'm gonna grab the image again using the site stripe across the top here. I'm gonna go for large, I'm gonna copy. Copy all the code. Go back to the website. I'm gonna to switch to the text editor. Then I'm gonna paste it before the very first word like this. There's our image. I'm gonna switch back to the visual editor. You can see our image. I click on it and then I'm gonna click on a line right. There we go. That looks good. And then yeah, down here I'm gonna add a link to Amazon. So I'm gonna grab a button from Elementor. There we go. I want it centered. I need a little bit of space above it, so I'm gonna to go to advanced. I'm gonna untick the chain. I'm gonna add a 20 margin. Maybe a 30, let's have a look. 30's good. Then back to content and we can change the text here. And then I'm gonna include the name of the drone. I'm gonna paste that into text box up here. On Amazon, there we go. I'm gonna add a little icon from the icon library. Just an external link icon, this one. There we go. We of course need to add our affiliate link. So back to the text uh, link section, full link, remember, copy that, go back to the website, paste it into the link box for the button, click on the little cog, because remember, it's a good idea to tick those two boxes. And there's our button. I think it could maybe be a little bit bigger. That's what I'm thinking. There's a size option here, let's make it medium. Mm, could we go even bigger? I think medium is probably about right. I wanna mess around with colors, that kind of thing. You go into style, change the background color here. I've got the global colors here. That's quite nice. We'll go with that. One last point with regards to the icons and things on your buttons, or anywhere really. Um, don't use the Amazon icon. It can be quite tempting to, you know, when you're creating a button like this, think, oh, I'd like to use this icon, which looks nice, but Amazon don't like it. They don't like you using their logo. So <laughs> external link is probably better. So that's one product added. I'm gonna go through and add the other three, and then we'll finish off this piece of content. So here we go, all four products are now added to the article. Quick couple of points on this. Of course, if you wanna quickly do it, you can right click up here and you can duplicate the entire thing. Really easy to kind of edit the layout. You can of course save it as a template as well. So you've got the whole kind of product section that you can drop into your content. But yeah, that's about it in terms of products. And the final thing I just wanna show you is that I've added a little bit of margin to the bottom of each one of these so that there's a bit of space between them. Do that within the section properties over here. Go to advanced. There we go, I've added 30 margin. So let's add these um, final paragraphs. Remember these are targeting some other questions that we saw were coming up in Google Suggest. Was best drone for under 200 and are cheap camera drones any good? So I think I'll add all this as just the one section. So let's click the plus, select a single column. Start with a heading, H2 is fine, Let's copy, paste it in. I've just realized that these headings are kind of in lowercase with a capital letter, and this one is in, in uppercase. I don't know if that's a big deal. There's a little tool actually that I'll share with you that's kind of handy if you realize that you've got stuff in uppercase when you need it in lowercase or vice versa. It's called convertcase.net. Say I wanted to make this, you know, a different case, just paste it in. Something like that might be fine. Capitalized case. Paste it back in. That's better, let's get some consistency. Okay, let's add this other bit of text. So I'm gonna grab the text editor, drop that in. Copy this. This has already got my affiliate link in it. 
So I should just be able to paste it straight in. There we go. Now, of course, I may wanna just set it to be no follow and open in a new window. So if I highlight it, click on the little pencil, go to the cog. I can tick that, there we go. Next, we need another heading, so drop that in there. Are cheap camera drones any good? Then we need the text editor. There we go, and then final thought. Then I'm gonna copy that and grab the text editor again. There we go. So there's one last thing that we need to do, and that is to add our Pinterest graphic that we created earlier. Now I'd like it up here next to this bit of text. And rather than create columns or any of that stuff, I'm just gonna drop it in with the text, a bit like the site stripe images. So we're gonna add media, upload files, and let's find it on the computer, there it is. Now I'm gonna add some alt text over here, because Google kind of reads this to find out what the image is about, and you know it's another way of getting your images indexed for the right keywords. Best drones for under $200. Perfect, I want it to go on the right. Size medium is probably about right. There we go. Now the problem I've got is that I haven't quite got enough text, so I'm gonna write a little bit more text just to fill this out, otherwise it's gonna look a little bit weird over there. So um, give me two seconds. There we go, and a couple more paragraphs. I think it looks better now. But anyway, let's have a look at it. Let's click update, save all our changes. Come up here and go view page. So here's our article, there's the excerpt, there's the featured image. It's actually looking a little bit grainy, maybe I should increase the quality in Canva a little bit, but it's fine. There is our lovely Pinterest. Here's the table. Then we've got the information about all of the products with the pros and the cons, looking really nice. The buttons through to Amazon, and then we've got our final paragraphs there. So there we go, the article's added. One final thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through it with Rank Math SEO just to make sure that everything is in the right place. Won't take a few moments. I know that it's you know pretty well optimized by the way that I put it together in Word with the, the headers marked out and making sure that I got keywords within first um, paragraph or so. So it should be fine. But to optimize with Rank Math SEO, go back into Elementor. So you've got a little SEO tab over here. Now don't get too obsessed with this panel. A lot of people spend too much time in here. You don't really need to do that. You need to get the basics right. So this top bit is the preview of what it will look like when it comes up on Google. The main things you wanna worry about in here are the title. Now the title is fine because it's you know right here. So if you add it correctly as the actual title of the post within the editor, then you don't need to mess with this because it will just take that title. But if you do need to adjust it, you can in here. Next, we've got the permalink which again is fine, it should match the uh, the title ideally, and it should of course include the keyword, which it does. You can't include a dollar sign, but that doesn't matter. And then we've got the description. Now this is coming from the excerpt, which we set earlier. But if you need to override it, you can just type in here, and that affects the text here, which is the little kind of snippet that you get on Google. Now, what I will say is that Google will decide what that snippet is gonna be. So even if you do enter some text here, you're not guaranteed to see that text on Google. Google will decide what text to put there. So a lot of people nowadays say, don't worry about setting anything because yeah, it doesn't matter. Next on Rank Math, we've got our focus keyword. So this is the keyword that we're trying to rank for. So for this article, it is of course, best drones for under $200. Just press the tab key. Now, once we've set that keyword, it gives us this score, which for this article is 77 out of 100 but as I said a minute ago, don't get too obsessed with the score. Don't spend hours and hours trying to get 100 out of 100. It's really not worth it. So here it's given us some tips on what we need to do. It says the focus keyword is not found in the URL. I'm sure it was, let me have a look. Best drones for under two, it's cause, so we can't get the, um, the dollar sign in there. Not worried about that. Everything else is ticked. It says that the content is 1,462 words long, good job. It's not a green one, it's an orange one, so I'd probably prefer the article to be a little bit longer. I'm not gonna worry about that. We've got a few additional points here. Keyword density is a little bit low. 
So I could try and squeeze the keyword in a little bit more. I'm gonna leave it. I don't wanna over optimize. Saying we haven't got any internal links. So when you're creating content, it's a good idea to link to other content that you've got on your site. Obviously at the moment I don't have any other content to link to. But when you've got a bit of content, it's good to interlink them together where relevant. Then it's given us a tip on the content readability. It says uh, we should maybe have a table of contents to break down your text, which is a very good idea. And there's a few plugins that can do that for you, or indeed Elementor Pro has a table of contents as well. But I'm gonna leave it for now. Let's click update. And then let's have a final look at our piece of content. There we go then, we're all done. That brings us to the end of my part of this video. If you've got any questions or comments, do leave them below. I will be checking the comments on a regular basis. Or why not send me an email? My email address is eagle at wpeagle.com and I'll try to reply to as many as I possibly can. But anyway, back to Daryl. So now that we talked about the basics of the website, now let's go ahead and talk about my tips and things you need to know about Amazon affiliate marketing websites and just a a general overview about websites and backlinks in general. Now let's go ahead and talk about domain authority and also page authority first. Now let me explain to you how the Google rankings work for your Amazon affiliate marketing website. You start by writing reviews and content for specific products on Amazon. You optimize these posts for Google, then Google will index them and place them in the Google search results. Visitors will then find your blog posts and this is how traffic is generated to your Amazon affiliate marketing website. However, there are some factors to consider that will help users find your blog post more easier. First, let's talk about page authority. But what is page authority? Page authority is the overall score and ranking on how that specific post or page is ranking in the search results. The higher the page authority, the higher it will appear in the Google search results. Each time you write a post, it's given a score from 1 to 100 by Google. And this is determined by various factors in the Google algorithm, such as readability, structure, optimization, and the quality of your article. In short, if the blog post is high quality and contains very relevant information for users, then it will be given a higher page score and be placed higher in the search results, making your website easier to find. So make sure you write quality content that would actually help someone to get more traffic to your websites. Next, let's talk about domain authority. So what is domain authority? Domain authority is also listed from the score from 1 to 100 and is the overall score and credibility of your website. There are several factors that can help you increase your domain authority of your website, such as users interacting on your website like commenting and sharing, reputable websites linking back to your website with good domain authority, and making sure that your posts and pages are fully optimized for Google. Higher domain authority helps greatly for future posts and usually Google will rank your posts a little higher in the search results by default if you have a higher domain authority because you have already established a good record. Think of websites like a popularity contest. If you have a bunch of large reputable websites linking back to your website, Google recognizes this and will boost your overall domain authority because credible websites are referring to your websites. This also helps generate more traffic to your website because people can find your website a lot easier from other various websites. You can gain backlinks by simply outreaching to high domain authority websites and seeing if you can exchange links. There's also various companies that will do this for you for a small fee because it can be very time consuming. You can gain a higher domain authority by obtaining do follow backlinks from credible and high domain authority websites. And remember, backlinks are essential for your website's domain authority score. So to summarize, that's how the Google rankings work and also how you can get more traffic to your Amazon affiliate websites. So I hope that made sense. Domain authority is essentially the strength and the overall score of your website. I'll leave this in the description below. So for example, the AREFs, the website authority checker, you can go ahead and put in your domain here and check the website authority. And then it'll give you a little bit of information about it, like your domain rating, the websites linking to it, and the number of backlinks uh, to your website. And remember, the higher domain authority websites linking back to your website, the more popular or stronger your domain authority will become. So that's a quick overview of domain authority and also how to check page rank as well. Now you guys can use these tools to check page rank, but don't get too hung up on them. Uh, it's not the, you know, as long as your content's ranking, you know, that's really all that matters. And um, yeah, just be mindful about that. 
Also, remember, if you guys need more tips on how to write blog posts, I will leave this in the description below. This gives you the rules, the ins and outs, case studies, and just the structure of how to write blog posts correctly. And, uh, you know, just things to include and things not to include in your articles, like stuffing keywords and so on and so forth. So Arefs is like an overall tool for SEO. And essentially what this can do is that this will actually tell you what you're ranking for. Now, when you're writing articles, it can be very difficult to check, okay, what am I ranking for? Am I ranking for how to make a blog, how to make a website? You know, it's very hard to determine what you're ranking for. So using tools like Aref or even Moz, where they can actually monitor your website and they'll actually show you what you're ranking for and where you might need improvement. And these are pretty good tools to have, you know, just because you wanna see uh, you know, the search volume for keywords, you want to know what you're ranking for. And it just gives you tons of information about keyword research. It gives you um, information about what people are searching for, uh, different search engines. And before you're actually trying to go after a keyword, like for example, the best drones in, I don't know, best drones in Mexico, that might actually be very competitive. So before you write about very competitive topics, you might want to check it out saying, well, you know, is this, is this hard, you know, is this really competitive? Because usually domains with really high authority usually rank for very competitive keywords. So keep that in mind. And again, it just gives you an overall score of like the keywords, your positions and everything else. So it's a very good tool. You know, I'm sure you guys have probably heard of Arefs, but that's exactly what it does. Also Moz does the same exact thing. They're just the same service. They just kind of offer like, you know, they have a different approach for it. So they're essentially the same thing. So just be mindful. That's a way on how you can monitor your information and rankings using these two websites. Also, for those of you who want to uh, pay someone to write your content, once later down the road, you know, you get more established and you don't have time to write content and you're making sales, you can actually hire full time content writers to write content for your website, like Texan, you can use iWriter.com and also uh, BKA content. I'm familiar with uh, iWriter.com and uh, this website actually is really cheap and they actually use a website that uh, watches for plagiarism. So that's also very important. Whenever you get articles from any one of these three, uh, use some sort of plagiarism checker. I'm sure you can Google it and find five websites or something that watches that and um, make sure that your content is not uh, copied because if you do have content that's copied, uh, that'll actually be very bad for your website and there's a chance you can lose domain authority because then they, they think you're some scraper website, which is just websites that just scrape other content off websites and hoping they rank for it. So you don't wanna do that. So make sure uh, you check out these websites. It's a very quick way on how to uh, you know get your business up and running. Also, for those of you who need backlinks, now, before we talk about backlinks, I need to explain uh, do follow backlinks and also no follow backlinks, just so you fully understand what I'm talking about. Next, let's talk about backlinks. There are two types of backlinks. There is a do follow backlink and there is a no follow backlink. And the difference between both are pretty important. A do follow backlink will help you boost your domain authority and you will get traffic to your website. Essentially, a do follow backlink helps improve your overall score of your page authority, domain authority, and are considered very favorable. Now let's talk about a no follow backlink. A no follow backlink is still a backlink to your website, but it does not give you all of the benefits of a do follow backlink. For example, a no follow backlink does not affect your page rank or domain authority. However, it still brings traffic to your website. Some very large reputable websites create no follow backlinks to prevent their website from being associated with lower ranking websites in order to protect their own domain authority. So in short, when you're looking for backlinks from popular companies or reputable companies, make sure it's a do follow backlink so you get a boost of page ranking and domain authority for your websites. And if it's a popular website that still receives traffic, a no follow backlink is still a win because ultimately you are still receiving traffic from that website. However, if you have a bunch of low domain authority websites linking back to your website, that doesn't really say much about your website and generally your ranking will not improve. You can gain backlinks by simply outreaching to high domain authority websites and seeing if you can exchange links. There's also various companies that will do this for you because it can be very time consuming. So essentially, this is how the backlink system works and how to get more traffic to your websites. So in a nutshell, that is backlinked explained and that is the difference between a do follow backlink and a no follow backlink. So that's backlinks explained in a nutshell. Now, you can go ahead and just find websites in your niche. Like for example, I typed in like uh, the drone, you know, drone for this, drone for that, and I found this website. 
And this website right here will actually let you uh, guest blog. And we talked about how that's a way to get backlinks to your website. So for example, I think it was back here, right here. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I don't know these guys. I, I have no idea about them. But if you're in the niche of something, you can say, hey guys, uh, we'll guest blog for you. And that's essentially writing an article for them, you know, but in exchange, you get a backlink to your website. And remember guys, these websites are on the internet 24 hours a day, so this always helps. So for example, let's just say, uh, you know, I wrote for this company, it looks like this guys are out of business or something like that. And uh, we want a backlink, so you can see here how th these content writers, look at that, right? There's a lot of content, jeez. So usually within the article, you'll see backlinks, and this will probably go to another website, and this would probably go to your website, and that's kind of how uh, guest blogging works in a nutshell. Also, what a lot of companies do or websites do is they let you insert your links in the article, and they also let you put your link in the actual uh, who wrote it. So usually at the bottom here, there might be some sort of like a Susan Talbot. You can actually put your name and you can say, hey, go check out darylwilson.com or go check out my Amazon affiliate website.com. And uh, all these websites, they work together. You know, they work together to try to get backlinks because they're all in the same business. They all wanna make money, <laughs> you know? So just be mindful and just uh, consider that when you are uh, building backlinks. Now, you guys can use services for this. So there's Stan Ventures and, you know, I just Googled this one, Outreach Frog. So now let's type in drones for kids guest post, right? And I actually found one right here called justdrones.com. And uh, you can see they wrote this article, you know, how drones can teach your kids about science, whatever. And right here we have a backlink. So you can see this post first appeared on the dronegirl.com. And then this links back to the other website. So essentially what was happening here is these people are exchanging backlinks and that's just a way on how you guys can help each other get traffic and get more uh, visitors to your Amazon affiliate website. I know it's kind of a strange uh, way of operating, but uh, that is the most popular way and the most organic way to get backlinks to your Amazon affiliate website. Now, also in the beginning of this video, I talked about how other websites are making around $20,000. Well, there are websites that are making a hell of a lot more than $20,000 uh, from Amazon, and a lot of them actually sell their websites. So like Alex talked about, a lot of people, they build up these websites, and it starts generating around, you know, maybe $1,000 a month, which is a lot, but you can take that website and sell it for maybe thirty dollars or $40,000. And uh, here are some examples of some really uh, successful Amazon affiliate websites. You know, you have Wirecutter, you have Consumer Search. This is why I'm broke.com. In fact, this website right here, this is why I'm broke.com, is making around just $20,000 a month. And these other websites like Consumer Search, this was actually sold uh, for $33 million. So uh, you guys can see that uh, it's big bucks in this business. And look at the average post length, only a thousand words. I mean, that's it. So. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty crazy the money you guys can make and these websites they're made with people just like you who just say hey I got an idea I want to make a, a topic about something and you guys can see their niche right here so it looks like they're talking about like a speakers you know uh, giftideagig.com so these people just sit there and, and talk about you know whatever I mean look at the wire cutter the wire cutter was sold for 150 million dollars I'm sorry it has generated 150 million dollars in commission sales, and their average post is three to 5,000 words. So uh, I'll, I'll leave this in the article, or in the description, you guys can go ahead and check this out. But I just wanna kind of inspire you guys, cause uh, you know, what we said in this video, it's, it's not BS, like these are real websites making real money. And I think the biggest thing is people think, oh, I can't make that, I can't do that. Yeah, that's professionals, blah, 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 blah. It's so not true, it's so not true. I myself got started in my apartments, and uh, I worked my way up, it took a few years, and now I'm a very large YouTube influencer. And I never thought I would ever be a, a, a YouTuber, you know, even my family was like, oh, you're a YouTuber? Like, that's stupid, Daryl, you know? And, you know, I, I was going to, to law school and I, I quit everything because I, I really strongly believed in what I was doing, you know? Also, this guy right here, he's another YouTuber and he talks a lot about how to make videos and he's an influencer and I like his content, you know, it helps me improve my videos. And he's also an Amazon affiliate and he's probably making some crazy money because um, this is his website and these are actually his Amazon affiliate store. Now on his store, he talks about, you know, things that he uses, uh, the lighting that he uses, the, you know, different accessories, camera cleaning equipments. 
And then let's just say uh, I click on this and you guys can see he gets a lot of traffic. I mean, this, this one post has 50,000 views and uh, I have this light right here, you know, and if we click on view on Amazon and someone purchases this light, uh, this guy then gets a commission of the sale. So uh, if someone buys it, he gets uh, a commission of $1,000. And there are a lot of products that he's offering. So a lot of people on the internet, uh, they are full-time Amazon affiliate marketers. And uh, yeah, I just wanna make that very clear because I know people might think, well, you know, it's probably hard to get started. It is, you know, I'm not gonna lie. It is very hard to get started, but it's definitely uh, worth it in the end because you can get paid big bucks just like all these other websites. So if you guys have any questions for me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I do wish you guys all the best of luck on your websites. I've had viewers tell me they've they've started full-time affiliate websites, they've started web design careers, but uh, let me know your experience and also how this video was in the description below of this video. So congratulations guys, you have now made it to the end. I hope this video was helpful. If you guys have any questions for us, Feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond to them. Um, also, make sure to like this video. You know, we spent weeks making this video just for you guys, so we really hope it helps. And I really do wish you guys the best of luck and the best of success. Just keep trying, don't give up, and you guys will succeed. Now, also make sure to check out uh, WP Eagle's channel. He has a lot of good stuff about affiliate marketing that can really help you throughout your journey. My name is Daryl Wilson. I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.